Hi everyone! I'm so excited for you to hear the Sakening, which has been months and months in the making, but I also wanted to tell you first that it's the one year anniversary of my last mini campaign, Blood in the Bayou! And to celebrate, you can buy your very own Camp Galloway t-shirt at jrwishow.com. Pre-orders start right now and end on December 3rd, so if you want to support our show and the cozy town of Galloway, where nothing has or will ever go wrong, go get yours at jrwishow.com right now. That's J-R-W-I-S-H-O-W dot com. And to the $25 patrons who've supported us since our last drop, you'll be getting a super duper exclusive alternate color version of the shirt. Details over on our Patreon. Enjoy the episode, or let me know if it sucks. Oh, and I totally forgot, you don't have to wait a week for episode two because it's out right now on Patreon. Go check it out after this. Oh, what's up, Rollers? And welcome to the second most requested game that we play for a TTRPG, uh, which is Vampire. Vampire. Ah, vampire. 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 Everyone, every, everyone ah, chime ah, in with ah, little ah. vampire voice. Ooh. Little sake sake. Ah, 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 ah. I want to suck Three. your blood. Ah, ah, ah. To get in character, make sound you make when you suck blood. <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah. Um. A feast! A feast of blood cells! Do I smell some O? Do I smell some AB? Very good, very good. Uh, I think this is O negative, actually. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I am feeling very po- O positive about this. Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, I guess there's not much uh, uh, more to say about this. Um, uh, I'm very excited for this, as I hope the boys are, too. We're, we're basically going to explore um, these vampires they've created in this world and see where it goes. Unlike Blood on the Bayou, I have basically no pre-written plan because I thought it could be very, very exciting if we try to follow the characters this time and just see where the... Uh, see where see where it takes us. So yeah, uh, let's see where that goes. Uh, yeah, not that that's ever gone wrong. I just rolled with it before. That would never go wrong ever. I just don't know monster like, why control. We... <laughs> <laughs> Do not watch the monster control one shot. <laughs> Do not watch monster control. Do not watch monster control. We're recording the rest of this in person, but this is session zero, just to get everyone cozy and comfy with their characters and to try stuff out. So if you guys are ready, I can uh. You're right into it. I'm I'm nervous. Let's do it. Yeah. So, uh, you guys uh, listening will learn the uh, rules of Vampire as we go. We are playing Vampire: The Masquerade V20 Edition, just because I thought it better fit the themes of the campaign. But we will stop when something new comes up to explain it. But it's actually a lot simpler than D&D. So, yeah. Yeah. Unless you guys have any funny vampire-related maybe puns or like rhymes or like cool little things to say, we can get right into it. Um, I don't. Sort of setting you up here to uh, uh, to maybe say like a cool yeah, vampire. <laughs> this is gonna suck. Yes. All right. Any. All right. Anyone else? <laughs> any. 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 <laughs> like more positive ones, maybe. Anyone else? <laughs> Got any? Um... Okay. Enjoy the ride as the stakes rise. As this campaign will be to die for. Yeah, like oh, that's fuck. that's like the best that was, one that actually. Was, that was the best one by far, guys. Fuck, I feel like canines at lodging. Well, I feel <laughs> outclassed and uh a little bit downtrodden now. I feel impotent. Me too. I feel I feel I feel, I feel my sperm count dropping <laughs> ra- rapidly. <laughs> I feel my I feel my swimmers dying. <laughs> I feel my swimmers drowning. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah, I've got enough dice now. Welcome to <laughs> Session zero of the suck. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to session zero of the sucking egg.
Is that really what we're going with? Uh, <laughs> title. <laughs> <laughs> title bad thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to a story that has yet to be written. A story which will determine the fate of your world and the one that hides in the shadows. Welcome to story about vampire! <laughs> <laughs> Let us begin. So... We're going to start as we uh, pan down on a beautiful, smoggy, sunny day in Los Angeles. We see the glittering city skyline, but we move over as the camera pans along the horizon and into a side neighborhood, something that's a bit more suburban, as we see someone walking down the street, going about their day, with a spunk in their step. Conti, do you want to introduce your character? So you see this sort of like, this young blonde haired kid with kind of, it's all spiky and rough around the edges, wearing this sort of furry coat um, with fur that comes around the collar and a blue sort of V-neck, wearing some tech pants and sneakers. And he's just kind of like balancing a tennis ball on the, on the sidewalk as he's walking along. He looks very casual, but you wouldn't want to look at him the wrong way, you know? Yeah. Someone walks by and looks at him kind of the wrong way. He trips left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, what the- Watch where you're stepping, huh? Okay, sorry, sorry, jeez. <laughs> That's my foot, asshole. He keeps walking. And what is a measle doing today? It's just a day like any other, um... I mean, he's got, like, a strict schedule. What, what day is it of the week, exactly? Uh, let's say it's a Thursday. Oh, okay, he's robbing a corner store. <laughs> is that way for real? I mean, like, maybe. Maybe that would be on, on the on the agenda for the day, but, like... You thought this was vampires, and we're playing Grand Theft Auto 5, <laughs> <laughs> press, press Y. <laughs> nah, he's probably, he's probably heading out to, like, the hideout, uh, you know, where he goes to hang. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, as you're kicking the ball along the street, uh, you see your dad... Jeffrey, right before you pass around the corner, poke his head out with this uh, fading head of hair and burly mustache and says, Hey, Amisel, if you're going out, the least you could do is pick us up some more oil. <laughs> oil? All right. Yeah, and he, he, he gestures up at the uh, above him to the sign of the car shop. Yeah. Which is called No Breaks. Amisel's dad endorses fracking. How about you oil these nuts, old man? Holy kind shit. Like, he, uh, he's oh my God. God. <laughs> he starts, he starts like <laughs> fucking coming after you with his stride. Yeah, I run. I run. I'm running. And then you hear, yeah, you hear a voice from inside. Like, sir, sir, are you going to help me with my, my car? He just, yep, yep, ma'am. Sorry. Just uh, had to chase off a rat. We didn't bring me any oil. I flip him the finger as I'm running off. Don't forget this time. And uh, you race around the corner and start running through running through the city to the hideout uh, of your gang and I mean what does the hideout look like where are these guys situated so they're in sort of like an abandoned building at this point right uh, probably like a, a old store or abandoned warehouse and the area is kind of like you know you're not in the in the suburbs anymore this is this is more rundown so yeah it's 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 a lot more rundown yeah um yeah. So like it's and probably like as you're approaching it, there's probably like a little neon sign above it that doesn't work, that uh, it just says some nonsense like demons or something. They probably got a custom commission. Oh, that's fucking hype, yeah. And like as he kind of like kicks open the door, or like hip checks it on the inside, you see this kind of like dirty and kind of smelly old couch with probably like a few guys hanging out on it. Just nasty rug, uh, mini fridge full of beer and whatever nonsense somebody like this would be drinking, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, just very rung down in and kind of cheap looking place you know they they use what they got uh they're probably playing smash bros on a on a fucking <laughs> old tv or something <laughs> yep they're they're smashing it up uh you see a few of them uh, that you know you know a lot better clock you uh as you walk in yo a measle want to tap in man they go up to eight players now eight players holy shit no that shit's been i can't i'm not good with those controllers you know me they're too small for my big hands. <laughs> yeah, you do have huge hands, man. Jesus, just, real meat paws. Yeah, real fucking big. That's why you're here, dude. <laughs> One of them stands up and says, uh, no worry about me, guys. Uh, I, I'm, I'm done with Smash. I'd rather drink soda. And uh, he runs over to you and says, yo, what's up, man? Dabs Yo, soda, dude. Give him a nice dude. little, like, 
Oh, man, uh, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Unlike Soda, which you can never wear out. <laughs> you see he pulls a, pulls a can of Mountain Dew out of his back pocket, uh, cracks it open, sort of fizzles over his hand, and he just gives it a good old uh, swig. Not even the Baja Blast today, huh? Oh, no, man. No. Not on Thursdays, dude. You must be you must be running low on a, on a little on a moolah, huh? No, I just if I can be honest, I don't even I don't even feel like blasting today, man. Soda. Is everything like okay, man? Look at look at me, okay? You're oh you're always blasting. What's wrong with you? I know, I know I'm always I'm always blasting, and I know I'm always ice cool. And you see he cracks open a Gatorade, drinks that too. <laughs> Honestly, man, every beverage just does it for me. Every beverage that isn't water, which I haven't drunk in three years, but <sighs> it's okay, that big water wants you to drink that shit. I'm not doing I'm not doing so hot, man. Um It's the fangs, man. And you see uh as the other smashers in the room seem a little like a like a cloud is hanging over them as well and you know that the fangs are a are a rival gang of the demons in this area that you guys have various disputes with you've had plenty of turf wars with and they've sent you home with a few bruises before the fucking fangs huh what are they up to this time man i mean usually it's just the typical stuff turf wars and shit but um this time we sent a couple guys out because we saw them on, on Demon Turf and those guys haven't come back, man. <laughs> we're all starting to get a little worried, but um, I don't know. I guess we we're waiting to see what what you'd think. Well, Soda, how about uh, me and you? We crack open a soda and go crack some skulls. <laughs> you had me at soda. Clinks <laughs> <See? laughs> a, a soda with you, chugs it back, crushes it on his forehead, takes him a couple tries. Shit, fuck. Yeah throws it in the thing. All right, what do you say, boys? Want to teach those suckers a lesson? You see the guys get up from uh, playing Smash. Yeah! <laughs> 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 and they, uh, they make like sort of punk rock symbols. And uh, now that we all get a better look at this kind of room, you can see that they dress it with various things like that neon sign. There's a lot of spray paint. Uh, you can see a few iterations of the demon's logo, some different suggestions for how to change it. There's like, there's like little like Sharpie notes next to it, like pointing at things like, maybe we change this. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a whiteboard. There's like a drum set, a guitar and things in the corner, like more musical instruments. And everyone here has like, at least a few piercings. Uh, Soda's got like a bandana around his head that says Soda and like some dyed hair. I love this guy. Yeah, Soda's fucking great. You love Soda, Soda loves you. Yeah, every, everyone here looks very, very punk though. And you see as they pick up uh, just various implements around, um, one guy picks up his trusty pipe, uh, gives it a gives it a kiss. Yeah, I was gonna say there's definitely like baseballs, you know, ba or baseball bats, you know. Baseball bats, all sorts of shit. Soda, soda picks up a fucking uh... <laughs> a pillowcase full of soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you see, soda walks over to the bridge, pulls out a uh, an eight pack of Lacroix, and says. Only one thing this shit's good for, and he ties a fucking <laughs> rope around it <laughs> and, and swings it around like a flail. And he walks over to you and says, "All right, you ready to send him home with a few more bruises today?" <laughs> We're gonna send him home fangless. Fuck yeah! He daps you up. <laughs> everybody, we all kind of like everybody goes like one at a time, walks past him, and they kind of do like the elbow, like the forearm, kind of like high five thing, you know, where they kind of tap. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking sick. And uh, a measle kind of takes the rear after everybody heads out, yeah. You guys spend some time gearing up. You see a few of your gang uh, mates put on some extra leather, uh, some extra studs, and you guys know better than to go out during the day. You know that not a lot of cops look this way, but you know better than just to have a fucking gang war in the middle a of the- full on, Yeah, fight, yeah. What I do want to know though is how serious do the demons take this kind of shit? Like, do they just have stuff to beat people up or do they have like full on guns and shit? I wouldn't say that like at this level they have guns. I, w I would say it's mostly just like fucking melee weapons and like street fights. And probably like the higher up in the actual gang you go, the more likely they are to be fucking guns and shit. But uh, at this at this point where they are, no, probably not. Yeah, and you guys basically have orders from the top dog, right, to keep this area secured, right? To keep this part of town clear so they can do their runs and the shit they need to do. So having, you know, fangs encroaching in, not a good look. Yeah. 
but you guys head out after a couple more rounds of Smash, gear up, and you start walking out. Yeah, Amizel gets a Smash game in, of course. He plays uh, some Donkey Kong. Okay, bet. All right, first roll of the night. So, here's what we're going to do. I want to see if you win this. Okay, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, in Vampire, uh, rolls are decided by rolling a bunch of D10s, basically, uh -huh. and trying to get as many successes on them as you can. So, for this, I'm going to say uh, you just got to hit a DC of six, and you're going to be playing a contested Smash round against Soda. Okay. So, it's going to be your... Dexterity plus. I have a specialization dexterity that's lightning reflexes. Would that would that count for smash? Abs absolutely, dude. You gotta get those frame perfects. I'm gonna say this is dexterity plus computer. Plus computer. Okay. I don't think do I have anything in computer. I have one in computer. So soda's gonna roll. What is like a specialty when it applies to a situation? What does that do again? Sorry. Uh, it means that if you score, if you roll a ten, you get you count it as two successes instead of one. Okay. Let's see. You see, Soda picks Ganondorf. Uh oh, we're, we're doing the we're doing the big boys, huh? I'm gonna roll quickly. I don't have acceleration on. Fuck. Actually, you guys should just bring up Smash right now and see. <laughs> <laughs> see who wins. <laughs> Probably Charlie. <laughs> Change my tag to Soda. Okay, so we got um an eight, seven, five, eight, and nine. So I think that's four successes, right? Holy shit! Yeah, no, the difficulty you were aiming for was six. Yeah. Okay. Who do you pick and how do you beat him? What happens is I pick Donkey Kong and the first two kills, I uh, I kind of pick him up and throw him off and then edge guard him so he just kind of gets slammed into the fucking into the zone. Um, Yo, man, how the fuck did you do that? What the shit? Dude, come on, you know this. You get two jumps in the air, bro. This I pick him up. Broken. I pick him up again and and I jump off of the edge and suicide with him. <laughs> the final kill. Yeah, he tries to do that thing with Ganondorf where he tries to grab you and drag you down, and you just grab him out of it. Yeah, and, and I grab him out of it, and he's just dead. He's dead, because I, I can grab him midair. I'm Donkey Kong. <sighs> Shit, man. Uh, he throws down uh, his controller, and you see it immediately knocks over a can of soda and spills it all over the controller. He botched the roll. <laughs> Fuck. All right. I No, that's my bad. I should have known better. I should have known better. Stay in my lane. <sighs> Drink soda. <laughs> <laughs> and beat up And beat up fangs, man. Speaking of, he looks down, uh, he doesn't have a watch. He looks up at the wall and there's like a big kind of like uh, old school clock there on the wall. Uh, and he's like, it's getting dark out. I think it's time to head out. All right, you lead the way, man. Let's do it. And, and sort of this like really like almost excited grin kind of like takes over Measle's face. So you can tell he's super fucking pumped to go kind of, you know, beat some heads. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. And as you guys leave the warehouse and like, that this sort of dusk is falling over LA. It almost looks like you all have these glowing red eyes as you walk into the moonlight towards this spot. And it takes a little bit to get there. You guys sort of take the back alleys, uh, try to avoid too much notice. And when you finally roll up into this alley, you see that there's just like, it's pretty quiet. Like there's not a lot of people there. And there's just one guy in sort of that punk rock classic demon outfit, just kind of like, holding his ribs and like is sort of slumped up against like a metal scaffolding on the side of the thing. Yeah, um, so it's just like a demon guy? Yeah, it's just like a single demon looking kind of beat up. Oh shit, man, are we late? Fuck. And I kind of like run up to the guy and hey, hey man, Ryan, are you good, man? He looks up at you and he looks fucking scared, man. Oh shit. Uh, Amazon, is that? Fuck, is that you, man? Yeah, what? What happened to you, man? Uh, it was like... It was like a blur, man. We came out here to, to just, some, just to face some fangs. Thought maybe we could beat beat you guys to it, get a good promotion out of it. But something else, something else happened. There were some fangs and, the, and, the, and, it was, and it was going well. We were beating their asses like always. And then one of them was just so fucking fast, man. I mean, fuck, I can't even feel my leg. Can you help? I, I looked down to his, to his leg. What's, what's the situation down there? You see, it looks like uh, that, like, he got hit against this thing really hard. Um, like, the scaffolding is bent, and it looks like maybe his hip uh, has dislocated or something. Like, it does not look good. Okay. Can I do, like, I have, like, a decent amount of medicine uh, in my knowledge. I would like to, like, grab. <laughs> I'm going to reach back for, like, a baseball bat and, like, snap it in half over my knee and try to make a splint for him. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Go ahead and roll me intelligence plus medicine. So I got 110, a 4, and a 1. 
That is not gonna do it, unfortunately. You snap this thing and you start to try and put it in place uh, and he immediately, ah, oh, oh, fuck, no man, not that hard, Jesus. Sorry, man. And it, like even applying a little bit of pressure to it, looks like it's, it's really, really hurting him. Listen, okay, you stay here, unless you can get back to the hideout somehow, all right? Yeah, I mean, about an hour ago, I was like there and he kind of points over it like three feet to his right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Never mind. I'll do my um, fucking best. You think maybe you could you could give me a give me a guy to help me back? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say how many people do we have? I'm gonna just roll a. Uh, you've got you and Soda. I'm gonna roll a D10. <laughs> I rolled a two. Yeah. So you've got you, Soda, and two two other guys. The rest that's, of them that's like really funny because I the rest of them broke off. Like they started talking about how fun it would be to rob a gas station, and they did that <laughs> instead. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, funnily enough, I was going to send two off with them, so I guess I'll just send the two randoms off with them. Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's me and Soda. All right, all right, so you turn around to these uh, fucking, like, two huge beefing guys, the muscle of the demons, and they say, yeah, boss, we got it. <laughs> they <laughs> easily, easily pick him up uh, and and uh, start dragging him off. Make sure he's taken care of. Will do. Hey, man, who do you mean? Zelda. What the fuck, man? The other really man definitely plays Jigglypuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Puffs the stuff. And you see as he uh, as he starts walking back. Hey, Soda, you take care of him, all right? Don't let him get in too much trouble. Yeah, man. <laughs> don't worry, I'm Soda. Hey, Emazel, sometimes I, sh- I say shit, man. I don't even know what it means. I feel like this <laughs> I feel like the Soda thing's going really far. I mean, listen, you have you have a name. You gotta you gotta hold it up, man. I know, I just it's just like the reputation ever since the soda incident. I know, the soda incident was really, and an, it's not like anyone would even call me my real name anymore. Well, yeah, but I mean, like... I mean, we we both know it, right? You know. Well, I mean, you yeah, know. I know I know your name, but like, soda right. is funner. Yeah, I mean, you know that my name is. Yeah, it's... it's I, <laughs> Theo, 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 how do you say yeah, your name? <laughs> yeah, man, you know I'm Theo. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I just... I just Sometimes I can't tell what's man and what's what's, what's soda. soda. Yeah. What's soda? I get you. Shit, dude, this looks bad. <laughs> We've had worse. What's the game plan? Well, we're going to walk in there, just the two of us. There's probably going to be uh, five of them. So I'll take three, you take two. Um, and we're just going to beat the shit out of them. I don't, think, I don't think it needs to go any deeper than that. Usually when they're laying half dead on the ground, that solves our problems, yeah. All right, all right. We just tell them, don't fuck with the demons. And then we get them out of here, right? Yeah, I want to, at least one kneecap needs to be broken by the end of the night. All right, all right, all right. I'm going for a knee. Okay, first one to get the kneecap. Yeah, first one to get the kneecap wins. (laughs) Get the Uh, soda. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) where does the bit end and the prison begin, soda? (laughs) I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I've got real, I've got real hopes and dreams too, but, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you them when we're not in this. No. On this set. It's okay, man. I know. One day you're gonna be a great nurse. That's actually not it, man. <laughs> but like, clearly, clearly you're you're not gonna be based on that earlier. All right. Okay. Well, I thought I had a good vibe read on you, but my bad. Let's do it, man. If we make it out of this, I'll tell you my dreams. Yeah, you know we've been friends for so long. I just figured you would would have told me by now. Yeah. Weasel <laughs> <laughs> just looks a little hurt. <laughs> and he's gonna kind of like as as they like enter the area. I want to say he's probably not going to use it in combat because he's more of a fist fisticuffs kind of guy, you know. But he's going to be dragging that uh, metal pipe behind him, kind of like making a bunch of noise. Okay. So that uh, they know he's coming. Okay, I love that. So you're uh, you're pretty much alerting them that you're on the way. Go ahead and make me a. This is a pretty stressful situation. Go ahead and give me a wits plus alertness roll. Wits plus to see if you see anything. Yeah. I'm going to do the same for Soda. He's not super alert or anything. Okay, so four of them. You got four, six or above? Uh, yeah. Did you get any ones? I got a five is the lowest one you rolled. Oh, shit. Okay, you got four successes. Okay, all right. I'm going to roll something really, really quick. You guys make your way around the corner of the alley. <laughs> you see that there's like telephone lines strung up above it, almost like suffocating it, keeping you from seeing the skyline. And as you turn, you see what looks like a bunch of demons lying on the ground with sort of, like, blood slightly pooling under all of them. Shit. With that wits roll, you see through that sort of webbing of electric infrastructure above you, you see something move, and it almost looks like 
at first, just the way that they're like overlapping in the clouds, it looks like there's some kind of just vague movement. It's like when you're looking through a mesh screen and it's kind of hard to tell what's happening. But you see the silhouette of it looks like a figure trying to disguise himself amongst those cables. And you notice him, and he doesn't notice that you notice him. But he is kind of like perched above, like watching over this sort of scene. And he clocks, he clocks that you're you're dragging the pipe. Yeah. But he doesn't know that you've seen him. I wouldn't say anything because uh, I think Amiza would register that that he's trying to hide, and I'd maybe. Hmm. He's like above. He's yeah. like, um, I mean, the rooftops are not super high, but he's like, a, you know, a, a floor up or two floors. Yeah, up. I would, I would definitely be keeping like my eye on it or like, like keenly listening to see if I hear him. Kind of trying to approach every. Is there anybody like on the ground other than the demons? As you get closer, it looks like it's pretty much. It's it's just demons. There are four of them lying there. Yeah, I run up to him. Come on, Soda. Um. Hey, hey, I go up to one of them and kind of like lift their head a little bit off the ground. And are they conscious at all? When you lift their head off the ground, you see that their face has basically been smashed into the ground. And there's just like a bunch of blood coming from their nose and on the ground. And as your attention is on them. Jesus. I'm going to say because you saw this guy, he doesn't take you by surprise, but you see as suddenly this silhouette drops from the rooftop. He doesn't take us by surprise. What? How does this do? Do we do initiative? Because I would start swinging. Absolutely. Oh, oh you start swinging right away? Okay. Yeah, he yeah. drops from the rooftop and says, well, look, and he, <laughs> you fucking <laughs> go to clock him right in the head. Go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah, it's it's kind of like he, he drops as well. I'm like, asshole. Kind of like <laughs> swing my fucking pipe at him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. So to roll initiative, uh, you are going to roll your uh, your wits plus dex. Yeah. 46. What? Oh, no. Sorry. 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 It's how many successes? How many over six? And once cancel successes. I think there's like two, four. I'm going to say just to be safe, I got three fails, one or four successes. I think that's probably a safe bet because I saw a few sevens and sixes. In okay. Oh, you got four. Okay. Four successes. All right. Yeah. I'm going to say it just to be safe because I don't want to uh, give myself a needless advantage here. All right. So just going to roll two. Let's go, Soda. Let's go. Yo, it's going to roll two tens. Holy shit. You absolutely take this guy by surprise. He, uh, he rolled one success. So the first thing he does, he drops down and he starts to talk. You immediately go to fucking swing for his head. Go ahead and give me a dex plus brawl roll. Five, five successes. You absolutely fucking clock this guy with a metal pipe across the face. What is your, this would be probably strength plus two. So what's, what's strength plus two for you? Like plus two dice or it's three plus two. So, so five, five. Okay, all right. You clock this guy across the face. You see as you swing into this guy as hard as you possibly can, uh, basically full baseball bat style. The pipe, you feel it collide with his jaw and you keep swinging, but it's like hitting a cement block in your hands and your bones are like ringing. Yeah. You see that his hood flies back and now you see this looks like a boy probably about your age with short brown hair, sort of paler skin it almost looks like you can see the veins in it and he has like a little blood around his mouth and his eyes are like glowing red okay yeah so i do like one big fucking baseball swing at this guy's head right and it probably stops right as it collides with him and it leaves my hands just just ringing and i lock eyes with him and i just say <laughs> you're a tough one aren't you oh that's one strike buddy you get two more you the one who did this to my guys yeah, and I'm gonna do it to your guy right there too, and then I'm gonna do it to you. Where do you get off, huh? You know this is demon territory. Not anymore. He cracks his knuckles quickly. But I did. I did only roll one success, and it looks like your fucking friend rolled two. So I'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> uh, soda, soda looks. Soda looks at you. Oh uh, man, man, what the fuck, dude? What's going on here? What do I do? What do you want me to do, man? We do what we do best. Drink soda. <laughs> And crack open the liquor. <laughs> that response was so fast. <laughs> okay, soda, soda runs at this guy. Um, soda swing. <laughs> you see, as he, he he grabs this rope and basically hurls his shoulder into this, sending this pack of Lacroix over his shoulder towards this guy. Soda, you'd know, is not the best 
fighter. Yeah, but he's always got my back, so. He's like, a, but he's always got your back. Yeah. Soda is me, bro. Like, that's why. <laughs> that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Soda's gonna aim right for this guy's fucking head. He hits him in the head. <laughs> Do you see as this blow uh, explodes <laughs> over his head, sending a shower <laughs> of LaCroix <laughs> fucking everywhere, sprinkling all over. And it like knocks this guy's head down. He sort of looks up now soaked in this like fizzling uh, liquid. LaCroix, uh, Fang's weakness. Okay, you're gonna fucking die first. That guy, he's dead. What's your name? Uh, <laughs> Shoda? What? <laughs> you see, this shadow of a person darts past you and is just gonna go right for fucking Soda, who pissed him off. Uh, is there anything I can do? And I'm guessing not. I had to, like, declare my action beforehand. You can't, you've already taken a swing on him. Fortunately, there's nothing you can do to stop him. Gotcha. Going for Soda. You see as he clenches his fist and this like sweatshirt almost like bulges up to like accommodate these muscles. And Soda says, Kim, so it's all right, I can block it. And uh, this guy <laughs> darts out no, of lightning, <laughs> lightning fucking speed, and Soda immediately takes. <laughs> okay. Don't kill Soda. Don't kill Soda on me. <laughs> Soda tries to get out of the way. He does not do it fast enough. He gets knocked in the stomach. You see the wind gets knocked out of his lungs, and he goes like spiraling into like a wooden pallet that just like bursts basically apart as he hits the ground. Uh, he's still conscious, but you can tell that he is not in great shape. And then this guy turns to you. Uh, he sees you raising your pipe and he says, oh, not yet. It's still my turn. You, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and you see as those veins in his face pump for a second with like this crimson liquid and you blink and he is right in front of you. And he is going to try and grab you. Okay. Like handling a, a child, basically, runs up to you and just like puts a hand around your throat. And it feels like a iron vice grip that you absolutely cannot break. And he starts to bring you basically closer to his face. Oh no, he's gonna he's not gonna use the kiss action on me, is he? Not yet. That's what he does with his turn. It's your turn. I see how you fight, but let me see how you taste. What the fuck? <laughs> Um, Fuck, man, sorry, that kind of... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how it came out, because you're going to be dead. Gonna you can't tell anyone that I said that, freak. all right? You can't tell anyone I fucking said that. So I'm going to try to, like, through, like, choked breath, I'll probably try to yell to Soda to get out of here, because that was a fucking mighty hit. I can I can have myself. So he'll be like, Soda, get out of here! <laughs> no, man, I'm not leaving you, man! I can take him! I can still take him! What I'm going to do... I dropped the I dropped the metal pipe as soon as he picked me up by the throat. Okay. I'm going to try to grab his his head and just slam it into my knee, basically, and then see if that's enough to like break his his grasp on me. Fucking love it. Let's call it a kick. Uh, go ahead and roll Dex plus Brawl then. Okay. Um, you're you're aiming for stuff above seven, so your difficulty seven. Four, four. One of them is a ten. Absolutely yes. Hits him. You see that this one actually does affect him. He is not expecting it at all. You see as he opens his mouth and you drive your knee into the bottom of his jaw, like sending his basically bottom teeth up into his top teeth. And he like winces back, doesn't let go of you, but says, fuck man, I just fucking got these. I told Soda over there, I was gonna leave you defanged. And that's just what I'm gonna do, fucker. Oh, uh, I don't know if I can do any more actions though, right? Uh, unless I announced it was a multiple action. No, that's that's gonna be it. You can tell you put, you know, you, you gave him a bruise. Yeah, I, but he didn't drop me. Yeah, he didn't drop you. And he leans you in real close. And he says, I think you'll find that these fangs work just fucking fine. And he tilts your head like out of the way with just his thumb. What is uh, what is Soda doing, by the way? Soda is... Is he just like sitting there unable to do anything? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. No, yes. hang on, Soda gets, Soda gets a turn. Soda is fucking beat up. Soda runs at him. No, man, you don't touch my fucking friend, dude. Um, he has he has no soda left. Oh no, he's the only weapon. He picks up the pipe you dropped and just goes for a swing on this guy. <laughs> Completely misses, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh fuck. You see as he as you both basically swing out of the way and he just hits the the asphalt, sending sparks flying up. Yeah. Too little, too late. Little Lacroix. Probably right before he like it goes for for his bite here. I'm probably gonna make eye contact with Soda. Be like Soda, run. <sighs> I'm not leaving you, man. You can tell he's shaking. 
that's like the most I can do for him right now. Yeah, yeah. But he like is backing up. He drops the pipe. It's not even like he intended to. It's okay, sort of. Go. And you see as this guy opens his mouth, glittering, sharp, white fangs are the last thing you see before your eyes almost involuntarily shut close, chomps into you. And at first it feels like a searing pain almost. And then it feels oddly peaceful. You open your eyes really suddenly and you feel like you're floating in like a sensory deprivation tank. And you're floating in this thick crimson liquid uh, that seems to stretch on forever around you. And in front of you, as your eyes kind of flick open, it's almost like looking through a lens. Like you can see through your eyes, but they're in the sky. Like you're not really in your body. And it's almost like a third person perspective as you see Soda crying out to you, hand outstretched. And you see this man, this fucking boy who got one over on you. You didn't even get his name, who is something else entirely. And you see as he is teeth in your neck, blood splattered across his face, and you can make out a smile on his face. And you feel yourself getting weaker as you're floating here, just watching this. What do you do? He probably like sits there and, and it's probably like time is moving in slow motion, kind of just comprehending everything that he, he's seeing underneath him from this, from this almost like eagle eye view. That's how I'm imagining it, right? But eventually he kind of figures it out and, and comprehends what's happening to him. And I want to use a point of willpower to kind of regain control of my body here. Yeah. As he kind of like shakes off this, this sort of trance that he's he's been put in. Yeah, you can feel as if you've been forced into this place. And what do you think to yourself as you use this point of willpower? Um, can I not think something, but instead like say something out loud to this guy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's probably just kind of groaning a little bit. Um, but he kind of perks up a little bit and says, You piece of shit. <laughs> Don't you know demons have fangs too? And he's gonna kind of launch his mouth towards this guy's neck to, to take a bite out of him. Go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and make me a dex plus brawl roll. Well, if can I use a second willpower or is it only one per turn? I mean, I'm gonna say you could use a second willpower, you'll just be down two willpower. Yeah, that's fair. I think this is, you know, important to see. <laughs> so nine, six, eight, eight, nine. Yep, you were trying to beat an eight, so that's more than enough. Um, you feel as this guy is, like, essentially taking your life from your body. Um, you start to feel, like, this gnawing, grinding sensation in your gut. Like, this is wrong. And as you snap back to reality, it's a combination of this willpower and something inside you almost beckoning you to do this as you fucking chomp into this guy and draw blood and almost involuntarily you swallow and basically lurch back and he lets you go oh fuck what the hell man fuck 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 what's wrong with you he's gonna start swinging again <laughs> You start swinging again at him? Unless I'm like, I'm in like a, <laughs> a state where I can't do that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say you guys are out of turn order unless you want to go back in and start still beating him with this crowbar, which is totally cool. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. You know what I'll say is you go to hit him again with the pipe and you suddenly hear like a boom, boom. And your vision almost like flashes red and you feel this pain in your chest. Yeah. As you fall to the ground, uh, dropping this pipe. It's probably like I'm, I'm halfway through my swing. I'm like winding up the swing and I go yeah. and launch it towards him. And I freeze up halfway and I just grab my chest and then fall over onto my side. And you hear it starting to speed up at first. Bum, 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 what the hell bum, did you do to me? Bum, 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 bum. What the fuck did you do to you? You piece of shit. I'll kill you. He's like probably like slowly falling more to the ground as he kind of gets weaker. And bum, 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 bum. And the measle dies. Damn, it was a good run. We've all been there, buddy. <laughs> and then, just like that, I need you to make a frenzy check. Oh boy. 
Oh, uh, what's the frenzy check again? How? What do I roll for that? This is going to be a self control roll. Uh huh. Okay, so I have four in self control. The difficulty is going to be eight. Yikes! And that's that's including the uh, the weakness, right? Oh fuck your weakness. Because like yeah, that's a plus two, man. Okay. <laughs> I would make oh, it a ten. Shit. That would be rough. So you have to hit a ten. Yeah. Uh, oh fuck. Okay. Let's see it. I guess. I, so it's only self control. It's just self control, man. I got one ten. Please say it. Holy <laughs> fuck! Holy shit! Holy shit! I got, I got shit. a three, eight, Holy six, fuck. and ten. <laughs> okay. Your eyes snap back open. And you feel as your pupils like shift over to, to soda and you feel this voice inside your head that just says, it, take it back. And you fucking, you think about everything that's happened today. You think about the demons, you think about soda and you shove that voice down. Uh, I would, no, I think how it would end up going is I'd probably like stumble up to my feet and start approaching him. Like totally considering the difficulty of it, I'd probably get right up to him and like get real close, like right up to his ear. And then I snap out of it, and, and I sort of understand what's going on, and I look at Soda, and, and my voice comes out a lot more dry and raspy, and I just say, "They told you to run." <sighs> yeah, man. All right, I'll follow your fucking <laughs> advice this time. Uh, and Soda runs off <laughs> into the street, and Soda is totally okay. Bless my boy. <laughs> you see, as this guy turns back to you. Whoa. He's just, he's, he's stunned to see you look like this. And I mean, <laughs> you, you look rough. What do you do? What do you want to do? Uh, wait, who looked at me? Uh, the, the, uh, the vampire? This silhouetted guy who's his, his now, his hood has been blown back. You still don't know this guy's name, uh, but this vampire, yeah. Yeah, um, honestly, in my mind, after I tell Soda to run and resist the frenzy, I probably would just pass out. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Um, <laughs> You see the last thing this guy does is he says, what the fuck? <laughs> and um, that's the last thing you hear before you hit the ground. <laughs> Damn, is he just going to kill you now? That's a good question. You don't know. You hit the ground. Let me roll something real quick. No, plot armor here. Okay. Yeah, plot armor exists, surely. Dies in the flashback <laughs> epically. <laughs> Dies in session zero. That would be so funny. <laughs> I'm ready with a new character. You have flickers of consciousness as um, you see this guy in front of you basically like pacing back and forth. You keep kind of coming in and then coming out again with his hands on his head. Just like, fuck, 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 fuck. I had one fucking chance. I was supposed to fucking prove myself. Don't make a mess. Shit. Um, and he looks over at you and he pulls up his hand almost at first as if to deliver some sort of final blow and then looks at you. All right, don't ask for any more favors. And don't try to fucking find me. And he drags you over into this sort of open kind of warehouse garage dilapidated shack situation just through a gap in the fence. As... Your eyes shut, Amazel. We fly up into the sky and towards that big, bright, glowing moon. And when we come back down, we are in the Romanian countryside. <laughs> and atop, atop a great hill that almost looks like a mountain is this dark, dark castle. You can see the windows faintly illuminated by torchlight and the moon is perched directly behind it as bats fly in front of it and overhead. We fly in along with a bat through a window higher up in the palace and into a room where we see someone lying on the ground like a measle was as they stir as the night begins. Bisley, would you like to introduce your character? So, the first thing you see are his eyes as they open wide bright red with very thin slit like pupils golden hair that's a little unkempt at this point but as he gets up and walks over starting his morning starting his day you see that he puts on these dress pants and this dark green dress shirt 
buttons it in very slowly and meticulously, putting on a vest over top of it that is a little bit of a lighter green with these golden adornments all over it, wrapping it all in nicely with a belt just around his waist. He opens a wardrobe, pulls out a cape, flaps it over his back. The emerald fabric cascades down his back, all the way down to his dark shoes with golden toes as he ties them beautifully. And he looks over into the mirror and slicks his hair back. He looks very, very, very similar to a measle, almost too similar. And he applies eyeshadow just around these red glowing eyes. This is Shiloh. Slay, dude. Holy shit. Let's fucking go. <laughs> oh, and he's got one of those like funny frilly ties like in the front. I don't know what you call them. Let's go! Yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. And like a big like cone around the back of the head too. He got the friller. There's art. You can see it. It's good. What does Shiloh's room look like? Very well put together. Everything is in its place exactly where it needs to be. Not a paper out of order, not a pencil, not in its case. The bed, very much made, like as if maid service had come through the room. No posters or anything like that. Walls of stone, very cold. But in the corner you can see the start of a massive bookshelf covering one of the walls. And as he walks over to it, plucks one out, opens it up, and you can see he uses just a little drawing he made of his view outside of the one window in here as a bookmark. And as he sits with perfect posture in his high-backed chair, flips a page and continues to read and await his orders for the day. And then you hear a knock. Not on the door, but somewhere in the corner of the room. Is this a familiar knock? It is. It is the knock you hear every morning for breakfast. Just one moment. He closes the book very carefully and places it slowly into its slot and walks down, his heels clicking against the floor. It's not the front door to your room. It is like this side latch, almost like trap door on the wall. Mm. And you open it up and just see these bright, yellow eyes looking back at you. Your breakfast is ready, Prince of Measle. And there's just like a gnarled pale hand that outstretches this golden goblet filled with this crimson liquid and it ushers you to take it. I think you said a measle. You did say a measle, was that? Fuck. <laughs> you could ADR now. Your you breakfast, want. your breakfast is ready, Shilo. Shiloh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be fucking executed. <laughs> he leaves, he leaves, he leaves the goblet uh, at the door. The trap door uh, slams yeah, and you so hear a, yeah. he fucking gets killed forever off screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, he takes the goblet and holds it daintily in his hand and sips slowly on the blood. It's rich, it's good, and it tastes the same as it has these past however many years you've been locked up here. Nice. I continue to sip on this for a while. Well, I'll probably continue my day the same way I always would with my morning fencing lessons. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll pull a dummy out from behind that high-backed chair and bring out my fencing foil and hold it at attention. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Do you make your way there yourself or do you wait for basically it to, it to come to you? I, it'll come to me, as it always does. As everything does, eventually you hear a knock at your actual, actual door. It is open. You see the door creaks open and there's no one there. Hello? And then from below the windowsill, Good night, good night. You know you can only hide there so many times until I start to expect it, right? My beautiful nephew, my beautiful nephew, surprise is the key in battle. Yes, I know. It's me, your favorite funniest uncle. 
I mean, it was surprising the first three times. Now it's just where I expect you to be. Yes, but you must expect the expected as well as the unexpected, lest I expect it first. On guard. And I uh, hold out my foil to him. <laughs> awesome. Your uncle, uh, you know him as Uncle Lazarus, is a stout man built kind of like a thumb, uh, which makes it even creepier in a way that he always is kind of floating like an inch off the ground. He's dressed in a very similar suit to yours, but a lot more white and a little bit more modern. And you see that he has spectacles on as well as just this big round nose and uh, this, this grinning fanged mouth, happy to see you. Let's hope you remember when I touch you. That and more. I've been practicing this. Ma, one. You're, distracted, you. you're distracted, you're distracted, you're distracted. And he uh, takes some stabs at you. Let's go ahead and do contested checks here to see if tonight is the night that you best Uncle Lazarus. Okay. So go ahead and roll me a dex plus melee. What's the difficulty? Six is the number to beat here. Six is the number to beat. Tell me how many successes you get. Three. You see as he starts to float towards you until his feet touch the ground and he goes for the same thrust that he went for yesterday. Tell me, because he botched it and only got one success. How do you best Uncle Lazarus tonight? As he goes for this strike, I want to just kind of hook my rapier into the hilt of his and whip it out of his hand. <laughs> Holy shit. Fling it over to the wall. His rapier goes flying out the window and he steps back for a second. <gasps> oh, uh, uncle, I, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to do my, that. My I beautiful just... boy. With, with moves like that. With moves like that. One day the whole countryside will fear you when you get out of here. Um, and you see as uh, you see as another set of eyes, like ghoulish eyes, peer over the window cell. Joke, joke, just go, just joking, just joking. You want to stay here in your room and continue your studies indefinitely. Oh, <sighs> oh, good, good fucking shit, Shiloh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's really nothing, Uncle. I, uh, I I read it in this book here. There's an entire book about fencing. I have been studying it nonstop. I stayed up all night reading it. Please, please, uh, please don't tell Mother. What is I... this book? Is it just like a fencing instruction book, or is it something in particular? Yeah, pretty much. It would be a. It would just be a fencing instruction and like more about the the mental state when fencing. Mm. I know it's about fencing, and I know it's rather limited to have this restriction, but you know how she feels about you reading mortal works. I know that really cuts it down to books written about fencing by vampires, but... What does a vampire know about fencing? They just bite! Well, okay, all, all right, all right, on guard again, on guard again, clearly, clearly, you have much more to learn. <laughs> you see as his, uh, uh, his rapier like levitates back over to him through the window as he swishes it. Uh, yes, uncle. You are lucky I was going easy on you that time, boy. That or you were the one who was distracted that time, right? <laughs> uh, that was a joke. You want to go at it again? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you want to go at it again? All right. You see as this time something changes in his demeanor as he was looking over that book that you were reading and he was sort of reading along to it. You see this time, instead of standing on the ground, he floats an inch off the ground again. You see this time he sort of switches his hands and you see as there's this almost pulse of this red energy underneath his skin that works its way into the fingers holding the rapier and he dexterously flips it around. Ooh. Let me show you what books written by man cannot teach. And... Go ahead and roll me another dex plus melee. Oof, that's two successes. So he got five successes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you see as he expertly knocks the sword off balance in your hand and holds out his other hand, flicks his finger forward and your sword goes like flying of its own accord into his hand where he just holds it at his side. Could a mortal do that? Well, I wouldn't really know, would I? I've never gotten to meet one. Okay, they can't. They can't. can't they cannot do that. <sighs> You're better here associating with us. Better. Better than them. They could not do that. They can't make fucking swords fly. Of course. I, I believe you. They just have regular meat, meat hands. What are they going to do? I, I get it, uncle. I'm safer here in the castle away from the meat hands. I just... I wonder sometimes. You know? Listen. Shiloh, you know I love you, but... If your mother catches word that you've been digging these dots again, 
Yes, I know. I know what she will say. She's already uptight. She executed a ghoul less than three minutes ago. Yes, I, I actually heard that. Uh, these walls may be thick, but I, I can actually hear a lot. Bet you can. You go stronger with every passing day. If it's any condolence, I do hope that one day you get to see that outside world. Take it for yourself. Well, has she said anything about that recently? No, no, definitely not. Definitely not, ever. But oh. it's, your, it's your mother. She, um, she keeps her true intentions close to her chest. Of course. And I, I trust her. She only wishes to protect me, and I... I understand. And uh, in the meantime, maybe you could help me with just a couple more books. Uh, nothing crazy, just like one or two. I don't know, something about birds. Birds. Specifically like a pheasant, actually, because I keep seeing references to something called a pheasant. I don't know what it is, but I'm very interested. As long as it's pheasants, not peasants. Am I right, boy? Uh, of course, uncle. Uh, Go ahead and give me a... I hate poor people, Shiloh. Go ahead and give me a... <laughs> I'm going to say this is going to be... How are you... You're trying to basically persuade him into, into teaching you some stuff that you're not... Like, that's not on the schedule, right? Pretty much looking for that, yes. Um, Go ahead and give me a... I'm going to say manipulation mm -hmm. plus whatever you're using in this in this moment so uh, it depends on how you're trying to do it if you're if you're batting your eyes if you're trying to use the fact that he you know you're definitely his favorite definitely trying to use the fact that i'm his favorite and that like that like guilt of i never get to go outside i should get something <laughs> okay so roll manipulation plus subterfuge subterfuge he's gonna try and resist it but for you i'm gonna he's gonna take two days away <laughs> So that's one ten. That's another ten. That's another ten. Oh fuck! Um, what's the difficulty? You're rolling contested, so anything above a six, six or above, is a success. Okay. So just okay, tell me okay, how many okay. you get. Um, that's five with three tens. Three of them being tens. Holy, Holy fuck. fuck! Okay, I thought he rolled good because he rolled four successes. Um, you see, as for a second he steals himself, and then you like just make the very, very vaguest, slightly wider eyes at him, and he goes. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So this is a pheasant. Some are gray, and some are umber colors. <laughs> Let me look up pheasant facts. I have some right here. Roosters will range and wait from. I'll give you the whole fucking page. That's a fucking. That's a rooster fact, Shiloh. This is why. Uh, this is why male you pheasants are called a roosters. Great Uncle Lazarus to teach you. Shit, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Did you know that while pheasants are able to fly fast for short distances, they prefer to run. Really? I actually am that way, too. Whoa. Their flight speed is 38 to 48 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah. They wouldn't stand a chance against your uncle. That, that is so cool. Do you think one day I can see one of these pheasants? <sighs> Just one time, please. I... I can hide him right there behind the chair. I don't know. I much, I much prefer mortal blood. Oh, I'm not going to drink the pheasant. I, I'm going to love oh, it. Oh, you mean to keep, not to eat? Yes. Jeez. Oh, um. You, 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 you want it? I will. I will love it. Oh. Care for it. Well. And feed it. Tell you what. Tell you what. These are some really interesting pheasant facts and. I'll be honest, I'm interested to see one up close myself, so next time I'm out, I'll do my best for my favorite nephew. You will, really? But don't go babbling about this, or it'll be my head. No, no, of course not. Uh, my lips are sealed. Uh, thank you, uncle. Thank you. All right. Consider your pleasant all but secured. Uncle Lazarus, away! <laughs> you see as he oh runs God. towards the window and dives out, uh, and there's this sort of shimmer of darkness as he turns uh, into a bat and flies up towards the top of the castle. That's awesome. Great. Ian, I, like, I pull out like a little journal, and I write down everything he said about pheasants. <laughs> okay, I, gotta, I have to make a note that he's promised you a pheasant. Two different worlds, bro, <laughs> listening to Condes. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is so good. All right, well... That's uh, that's fencing done with. What is Shiloh doing next? So Shiloh would probably spend a little while just kind of 
pacing the room, like not doing too much, maybe just sitting still and looking at the wall for a while. After a while, he'll get up and go over to this fencing dummy and just walk up to it and kind of look at it and go, Hello, I am Shiloh Bathroy. Nope, got to give it more power. Okay, ah. Uh, hello, I am Shiloh. Oh, now I'm shouting. Um, hello, I am Prince Bathroy. That, that's just stupid. Um, oh dear. And I'll just like continue like greeting this thing and like practicing talking. That's really cute. I love that. All right. Yeah. You do that for a bit. I mean, you feel like you've done this a thousand times. There's only so many times you can do it. And you know that the best way to learn for you to go from here is to is to see the real deal. So what I will do is go over to the door and just kind of put my ear to it. Listen for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Do you have any sort of like enhanced senses or anything like that? Um, no. That's really cool. Go ahead and give me a perception plus alertness roll. Uh, four passes over six, 110. I'm going to say with that, you can hear the guards outside your door talking because there are guards stationed there. Hey, man, I, I heard... I heard Lazarus in there. I mean, I'll never understand how those two get along so well. That guy's a monster. The other guy goes, Yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. You just, I was spacing out for like the past <laughs> three hours and you completely fucked it. And now I feel like I've got to spend like 40 minutes to get back in that sort of trance state. That oh, I, yeah. Sorry, man. I, I realize we don't really get along the best, but I was kind of hoping tonight would be the night. I mean, we're both here, you know, we're both watching over Prince Prince Shiloh. Got, nah, man. Nah, man. I'm just yeah, gonna, dude, it's, yeah, man, yeah, it's whatever. I mean, we're, yeah, we're vampires, man, so I don't, I don't even care. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> basically just these two guard vampires Pretty, pretty familiar voices. You know that they, they change them out only occasionally, but you're pretty familiar with the voices of these guards at this point. I want to just kind of knock onto the door and go, uh, hello, I, I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, shit. Um, yes, Prince Shiloh. Hey, man, I haven't done the bathroom ship. How does it work? Oh, you just give him the, you just give him the pass. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> don't worry, I'll show you. Uh, one of them opens up the door and says, yes, all hail Prince Shiloh. Here is your, it says on here, doo-doo pass. <clears throat> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you very much this, for my doodle pass. A, I will take that. So this is a prank. Um, okay. Are you... You're not always here. I mean, you're here sometimes, but never at this time. Did you get your shift changed? Um, I, uh... I was doing a little... Possibly a little snoozing on the job last time. Um, so I might have had my shift extended. Hey, that's okay, we all get tired. I'm very we sorry, get tired. very sorry. I should be watching you at every, every waking minute. Every waking minute. It happens. Don't worry. I'm very fortunate to have this position, and I and I do not wish to to lose it. I'm sorry. I've been talking too much to you. If you if you want to kill me, you can. I'm not going to kill anyone. I just like to use the bathroom. Just come with me and relax a little bit. It's okay. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry, Prince Shiloh. It's all right. He takes like a more relaxed, still rigid stance and follows you to the bathroom. So, how long have you been in the guard? Um. He's like sweating up a storm. <laughs> He's like so worried because he is he is so worried. No one is really supposed to be like interacting with you at this level. Prince, I, I, maybe it's better if we just, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've, I've been in the guard for, this is my third month. So pretty new. Third month, you're pretty new. Okay, how do you like it so far? Okay, um, it is, he looks in the eyes. Um, it's a living. I get it. You're not alive, are you? Oh, it's an, it's an, uh, it's an unliving. He kind of winks at you. <laughs> You're very funny. You see, as there's, there's like a more regal person that's passing by you as he winks at you, and they go, hmm, and like make a note. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> uh oh. As we're walking, like, they did not look very good, did it? No, I believe he saw me wink at you, Prince Shiloh. Oh. Well. I'm very sorry. I will miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. For, for what it's worth. 
Look, no, okay. As we kind of walk closer, I want to wait until we're in a spot where there might be less people. Okay, yeah. You walk through the halls of this castle. It is fairly empty tonight. You pass by a couple nobles and, and maids and people you recognize. You even pass by one of the five very important people in this castle under your mother that you would recognize. Mm -hmm. You pass by. He is kind of cloaked in shadow uh, and if you unfocused your eyes for a second you wouldn't see him but you see as this uh, silhouetted figure with these sort of tendrils of shadow following behind him makes his way down the hall and gives you sort of a solemn nod keeps going mm, I nod uh, you would recognize that as Orpheus and then he stops and looks back at you and uh, looks at the guard and makes a note keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, I, Prince I'm so fucked that's okay, you'll you'll be alright. Um, I wanna look back at him and like look into his eyes once we've reached like a spot where there's less people. Maybe that will be uh not so good for you, but if you perhaps go and plead your case now and apologize, then it will be okay. And I'd like to use my dominate discipline. Oh shit! Okay. To implant a false thought that if he goes and apologizes right now. <laughs> It'll be okay. And he they may spare him. Holy fuck. Um, all right, what do you roll for this? It's manipulation plus leadership. Difficulty is equal to the target's willpower points. This guy uh, does not have a lot of okay. <laughs> willpower. I mean, he's a fucking guard for you. No offense. So go ahead and, and, and roll and let me know every number you get above two. So I'm just going to count them out above two. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight. Jesus Christ. Nine. Okay. What does that do for him? Anything above five makes them do anything except harm themselves or go against their true nature. Okay. Well, you don't need to worry about that. He says, yes, Prince, you're, you're right as always. Who should I apologize to? You're higher up. Just stay away from the queen. Okay. Apolog we apologize to the queen? No, not the queen. Uh, okay. Just should I every higher up then? Anything for you, Prince. Good luck. Okay. He's going to die. <laughs> um, he runs up uh, to the man made of shadows um, and says, Sir, I would just like to apologize for my behavior before. I believe I winked and was talking with Shiloh and I actually heard them saying something about pheasants and I don't think I was supposed to hear that. I'm going to slip away. Yeah, that sounds good. The shadow just turns to him and says, Swallow. And it just like fully envelops him. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and you slip away completely unabated from this. Okay. I'd like to try and make my way towards wherever I think the queen might be at this point. Maybe a council chamber or anything like that, wherever she'll be. You would know the queen is wherever she's needed, but you've got pretty good at figuring that out by now. Mm -hmm. You would know that she would most likely, there's no meetings around this time and you just saw one of the council members walking away. So she maybe is still in the council chamber or, or she could be in the study, one of the two. I will first try the council chamber and I want to sneak my way there if possible. Okay, all right, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead and give me dexterity plus stealth. So I've got a five and an eight. You only get two dice? You start to slip towards the council chamber and you see as the other guard you recognize from being stationed at your door kind of scoots around the corner really fast. There you are, this isn't the way to the bathroom. Oh, sorry, I, um, the other guard told me I could come this way, that I, there was a different bathroom and- Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that, he's, he's new here, but um, Shiloh, you can't be, uh, let's, let's get you back to the chambers. You shouldn't be here. Well, hang on now. I've, I've still got to go to the bathroom. Maybe you could take me to this new bathroom I've heard nothing about. I'm going to say because he fears for his, his fucking job in life right now. He looks around. Um, okay. Yes, yes, Prince. Um, and he starts uh, walking you back towards that, that bathroom the same as before. Um, how well did you know this friend you had, uh, the other guard? Oh, I mean, um, I actually like to keep to myself. So he was... He was kind of, I mean, if you pardon my French, he was a bit much and just kept trying to get on with me, which was, I, I mean, it's, we just, we're both here for the job. Do you know? Like, we're not here to, to be, to be friends, right? 
You're about the business, and he's trying to mix in the pleasure. It's not. That's not right. A good, good That's mix. right. I'm about, the, I'm about the business, and sometimes the business is pleasure, but the pleasure's not business. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Of course. Exactly. Queen would be very proud. You really think so? Yes. She might be even more proud if you were to escort me on a recreational visit to the study. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go ahead and give me a manipulation plus leadership roll? Yeah. Dear God, wait, you have... I, I'm going to say you don't even... Okay, I just looked at how many die you have for this. You don't even need to. <laughs> you say this to him and he says... Yes, my prince. And he starts taking you there. You do hear, though, as you got closer to the council chamber, you did start to hear your mother's voice, I will say. Shit. Um, you only notice it now as you're walking away since you kind of botched that stealth roll. Uh, or he caught you, rather. But, yeah, he's taking you on this recreational walk. Okay. Um, I guess I'll still go to the study. Maybe I'll steal a book or two. He takes you to the study. This guy's a man of few words. Um, he doesn't really talk as much as, as the other one. Uh, you see that the people walking in the hallway appreciate that. Um, he takes you there, opens the door for you, lets you into the study, and stands there at the door watching you. I'd like a little privacy, please. Most guards don't sit there and watch. They guard. But w I'm not the danger. There is danger elsewhere. Look elsewhere. Yes, my prince. And he closes the door and watches outside. Because I just looked back at your sheet to see how many dice you had for that. <laughs> it's just like so crazy. Yeah, he's he's just outside now. You're good. Okay. I'd like to look around and if my mother has like a desk where there may be any kind of like letters or any correspondence with the outside world. I just want to know what's out there. I just want to know what's going on. Okay, absolutely. Go ahead and give me a perception plus investigation. And the DC you're trying to hit here, with more successes, you'll find something juicier. That is three successes. You start to go through her things. You find her desk and just start digging through it. There's a locked cabinet that you can't seem to get into, but you do manage to look through some of these papers and see transcriptions of events that happened in the council chamber. Mm. And you see that it looks like those Primogen, especially the one uh, that you saw, which is the name of those five sort of council members, are currently in a bit of a heated dispute over territory lines. And it seems like things are heating up as each one feels, you know, entitled for separate reasons. Uh, you see that one point of contention is a particular city, Los Angeles. You see that in terms of mortal correspondence, there's not really anything. I mean, like, it seems like you're, you know your mom and you know that she's here a lot of the time, but there's like, I mean, is there anything in particular you're looking for? Just like any, any letters from people on the outside or just any, like, I'm really just looking for anything. The correspondence is good, but now there is a locked cabinet. Yes? Yes. I'm just curious. That's all this really is. I just want to know. <laughs> you want to know what's in the locked cabinet? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I want to... Go over to the um, door and kind of knock. Excuse me. Yes, my prince. Would you mind coming in here for a second? Oh, yes, sure, my prince. Uh, he comes on in. Shut the door. I, I don't want a anyone misunderstanding, of course. Of course. Um, There is a cabinet down there that I seem to have lost my key for, and you would be very helpful to, to open it up for me. Um, I want to dominate once again. Yeah, go ahead. This guy's got a little more willpower. I'm gonna say number to beat is four. All right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can implant any sort of command. He now thinks that it would be in his best interest to open this. It's a very vague kind of thing. He just, opening it is a part of his duty now. He walks over to this cabinet and you see as he looks around for a second, he's gonna look for a key, I guess. Anything for you, my prince. Careful not to break anything. Unless you break the lock, then, well. He does not beat the required thing to find the key. <laughs> he looks around. Sorry, did you say do not break anything? I, I said unless you want to break the lock. Okay. You did say that after he walked away. So he is going to try and break the cabinet open. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you told him to basically get it and it was his job. So he takes it very, very seriously. Oh, shit. <laughs> you see as this guy 
what's this fucking guy's thing? What's his discipline? Uh, he just pulls his hand back and just <laughs> fucking punches the lock as hard as he can. Anything for you, my prince! Hey, uh, and he's gonna hey, go quiet, ahead and please. try and make some rolls. He's pretty good at this. He smashes open the cabinet and uh, you see as there's almost like this moment of daze over him and he says, it is done, my prince. Thank you very much. Um, My royal duty. I want to go into it and does it sound like people are approaching because of the banging? Go ahead and if you want to take a second to listen, you can. I don't, I don't. I want to go into the cabinet, Okay. grab whatever I can and hide it just under my vest. You grab it and hide it under your vest just as two more guards step in to the room. Don't hurt him. I, I told him to do it. It's not. Please. Oh, it's just the... <sighs> Prince, what are you doing away from your room? Exploration. That was a loud exploration. All right. Take me away. And I hold up my hands like I'm in shekels. First, they're going to see if they notice anything. It's a smashed cabinet. It was a loud noise. I'm gonna say DC is not super high. Probably a five. Prince, that's that's the that's the Queen's files. Yes, and you caught us before we could look at anything. Right, but the cabinet is very clearly smashed open, as if perhaps you were not meant to be here, but instead in your room. So before we shackle you up, which we are not gonna do, we're just gonna lead you back to your room, cough it up. What did you take? Did not take anything. Uh, okay, go ahead and <laughs> give me a, uh, is there a deception in this game? I think it's a subterfuge. There is, yeah, manipulation plus subter f subterfuge. I'm gonna have these guys, I'm gonna have these guys try and work together to, to see if they, they figure this out. I've got seven successes and three tens. Oh. Jesus, how are you rolling so good? I don't there's, know. There's, there's no way that they could possibly beat that. <laughs> so they say, <laughs> yes, my prince, that makes sense. Back to your room now. <laughs> they take you, uh, escort you back to your room and put you inside unless you do anything. No, I let him take me away. You are back in your room. Once that door shuts, I want to like dart over to my bed and freaking pull it all out <laughs> onto yeah, the bed. Absolutely. I'll shut the curtains. You pull all of this shit out. You find there are dates and there are locations. So you see that every week, basically, and you see that the locations that come up a lot, they're all in Los Angeles, uh, California. And you see the location that keeps coming up is no brakes, car repair stop. And you see- No brakes. At one point, Something just comes up that says, with Jeffrey. Jeffrey, who's Jeffrey? But it's ba it's basically like, almost like a weekly, like, report, it almost looks like. Okay. Go ahead and give me intelligence plus investigation. Uh, that is three successes. You would deduce with this, with that, with that success, this is not something you've ever heard of before. This is not a location you've ever heard of before. And it's pretty clear that these are records of like keeping tabs on something or someone. Mm -hmm. And you would notice also on one of them, like like a dirty cat's paw print. And you would know in terms of cats, there is a cat that <laughs> frequents the halls mm. of Umber Castle, this gray cat with these yellow eyes. But that's what you get. Okay. What are they keeping tabs on? Strange. Um, if that's it, then I'll just hang out in my room for the forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right. You hang out in your room? Unless. Unless. Unless that. You spoke of a trap door. Yes? Yes, in the corner of the room. In the corner of the room. Yes, that's right. Does it open both ways? Or could I get it open? You could, you could fucking jangle dangle it open. Here's what I'll say is go ahead and give me a dexterity plus larceny. And if you fail, it'll be how loud you are. Larceny crime, yeah. Larceny yeah. crime, do we crime? Yeah, crime, I love crime. crime. So you try to kind of pick this lock open and swing this door open. 
It's two successes. I'm gonna say the difficulty for this would probably be seven instead of six. How many oh, successes? then that's just one. One success? Okay, mm. cool. You manage to get it open, but it does kind of creak real loud towards the end and make a, make a sort of unnatural sound Yikes. as you wince. Okay, then I'll just like leave it kind of cracked, but not move. You leave it kind of cracked and you start to see your front door open. Um, holy shit. Um, I'm going to... Okay, so can I do two actions? Okay, yeah, so that's before a... the... Yep, go so for it. So it'll like... So it'll, it'll be harder to do it, right? That's okay, That's the thing in yep. this game. Yes, yeah. yes it is. I'm gonna yes split, it is. I'm gonna split the dice. I want to slip maybe just like one of my gloves off and, and hold it open so that it's kind of like slit open. Oh, love that, yeah. And then I want to grab a book with my other hand and open it and look like I'm reading it almost, just kind of like standing there. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Here's what you got. This would be a god. I'm going to say this is another dex plus larceny, and you're going to combine it with something else. But since your max in, in dex plus larceny is two, I'm going to say you effectively have two dice, mm -hmm. right? One for each task. You just need to roll both of them a six, and you'll do both well. So we got one die for the glove maneuver, and we've got one die for the book maneuver. What's the difficulty for the glove? Both are six. Both are six, right. I failed the glove. Okay. Uh -oh. I failed the other one. They're both ones. Uh -oh. I fucked okay. up. Uh, uh, no, yeah. you, you got one. You botched. You botched both. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You, you, you tossed botched. the glove. Toss the glove into the trap door. Trap door uh, basically floats close uh, with a latching sound, uh, and then you like try to grab a book, kind of scuffle and I fall. Fumble over, and I fall onto the ground. <laughs> the door <laughs> opens up. Prince, please don't tell me you're trying to escape again. No. Please look me in the eye. No, look me in the eyes. Please. It's so boring in here. The other one, the other one. Jeff, he's dead, isn't he? Probably, but that is not my fault. Mm. They are crazy around here. Just, can you please at least sit still until my shift is over? Yes, I can do that. You seem nice. <sighs> you have children? Maybe you can sit in here and entertain me. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Everyone that talks to you makes it maybe a day. Max, right. you've marked okay. me. You've marked me for death. You've marked me for death, Prince Shiloh. Please, just sit there and read your book But birds. Can you at least send word out to Lazarus to, to come and see me, please? I need to talk to someone. I also want to do dominate, and I want to, I want to <laughs> do that. <laughs> Fuck, man. Yeah, this guy's got a willpower at three. Go ahead and roll your dominate. <laughs> That's five. That'll do it. <laughs> um, so what does he what does he have to do now, basically? He just has to get Lazarus to come see me, my uncle. <sighs> All right. Yep, he turns to you. Um, <sighs> yes, my prince. Uh, and he just starts running off to go get your uncle. <sighs> Why are they always running? I just walk there. I walk over, I shut the door, and I... I'll spend a little while cleaning up the mess I made, making it look as immaculate as it was before. And then I'll lay on my bed, just like, hands crossed. Is it a coffin? Am I, do I sleep in a coffin? <laughs> do you sleep in a coffin? Do you? Totally sleep in a coffin. I go and I just kind of shut the coffin, but I've got like a little slit in the front and I open it up and I'm just staring out. You're staring out and I'm gonna say like, after a couple minutes, you feel something wet fall onto your forehead and you reach up and touch it and it's a little blood and more of it i freak out i start flailing in the box <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not new to you actually oh okay okay if it's not new to me then it's fine it's it's familiar because as more of it starts to fall from the cracks in the ceiling and ooze down to the ground. It's almost like a waterfall. And then that waterfall parts and out of it steps your mother. She is keen on dramatic entrances, but this is the queen. I would like to open the coffin and rise straight up out of it and like stand like at attention. You see her in her full form. She is a tall, slender lady with very sharp features. She has long, 
black hair. She wears this sort of black regal gown with this crimson pendant and this this crown that rests very gently on her head. She's very ethereal. And just as soon as she appears, the blood finishes falling to the ground and you blink and it is gone. And your mother is in the room with you. Mother? Oh, Shiloh. How many times? I, I know you are disappointed. I, I apologize. I see we are down another guard. And it seems like you've been dominating the others again. Not dominate. I ask them to do things and they do it. In a vampiric blood magic way that's dominating Shiloh and it is a power meant to be used responsibly I'm not using any powers I'm just talking not to them on the guards that I have appointed to protect you and keep you safe in this room yes mother I was in a very important meeting when I heard an interesting sound coming from the study and when I went, what do I find? But a broken latch and some missing papers that you should not be reading. What are you keeping tabs on, Mother? I know it is someone. You see, she inhales sharply. They talk about this place, this this no brakes car repair. I, I don't even... Shit. What could you want with this person? To hide it? You can tell me. Shiloh, it matters not to you, to your life. I'm not the boy anymore. Go ahead. This is going to be a really hard roll. Go ahead and give me a charisma plus subterfuge. I think that she knows you well enough at this point that this would be based on your charisma, not your manipulation, if that makes sense. Um, she's going to roll the same. She's very good at this. I've got some numbers. Oh, fuck. She botched. Oh, shit. She botched too. Oh, Christ. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Maybe this okay. all comes up busily. How many above six did you get? Five. With a ten. I don't know if that I don't know if that matters. I don't know if I need to call out my tens. Tens are auto successes, I believe, and then ones are auto fails. So ones ones negate successes. She unfortunately got seven successes. <whistles> and she leans in uh, and sighs. <sighs> what is it that you seek? What is it that you'd want? You know I keep you here for your own safety. I know. The others, they don't understand. No, I, I trust you. It, it is hard. It's hard to look out that window and know there is a world out there I, I can only look at and not touch. I know, but... If you touch it, it has a way of hurting back. Now, Shiloh... I suggest to you, as your mother, you tell no one of these documents, of this place. It's very, very important to me. Can't, can't you at least tell me why? I won't tell a soul. Perhaps things have changed. Perhaps. What's your willpower? My willpower is one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six little dots. She looks around nervous. She she sees the latch that is broken over in the corner of the room as well. And she sighs. And she looks at you. Perhaps I have not been strict enough. And she looks you right in the eyes. And she says, Shiloh, you will tell no one of this place. And you will give me back those documents. Oh, shit. And you immediately feel your hand reach up and give them back to her. I had her roll for this same thing that you were doing to people, mesmerizing, uh, as you give them back to her and you feel as if, even if you wanted to, you could not let this information pass your lips. Oh shit. And she says, if you thought this was bad, well, I've got worse news for you. 
you're grounded indefinitely. And she twists up her cape and practically vanishes as you hear her footsteps continue uh, out the door. The door doesn't even open. Great. Great talk. And I'm going to need you. You've basically found something you've never seen before, and your mom just made a fool out of you. You feel something not in your gut. Something twists. And you are trained well. You have a great etiquette, but no vampire can resist that beast inside them. And as you feel this shame, I want you to go ahead and make a frenzy check. Ooh, shit. It's just self-control? It's self-control. The difficulty on this is... I'm gonna say seven. Because this is pretty... This is all... Yeah. Yeah, that's... I don't pass on any, but I get two blunders. You botch it? I botch it. Are there botches? Yeah, I botched it twice. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Here's what I'll say. Oh, my God. All right, let me find something for this real quick. You feel this blood boiling in you as your mother basically ignores you again and again and again, and you finally found something, some connection to the outside world that she never, ever lets on to. And you feel as a part of you breaks, like you have to get out of this cage now. And I will say for the purposes of this frenzy, you've had it. You want to get out of here. You want to get to wherever this place is because your mom told you the fuck not to. And I will also say, you know, this is something, this is, this is, pretty common knowledge in the in the Umber Castle. There is a place in the castle towards the bottom called the Darkened Door that will take a vampire to wherever it is they need to go. You've never used it. You don't know how it works. You know it exists. What do you do? As you feel this, this anger and this betrayal overtake you. As I'm feeling these emotions, my eyes are just closed and I open them and that red glows a little brighter. But I don't behave as an animal or anything. I walk calmly over to the door. Is there a, a guard? I want to I wanna open it. Just, oh, I'm not even going to listen. I'm just going to open it. Yep, there's two again. They both look nervous after seeing the queen. What was the door called again? The door you're looking for is called the Darkened Door. Both of you will take me to the Darkened Door or I will scream and tell them that you have threatened my life. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Um... <laughs> Go ahead and roll, I'm going to say, manipulation plus intimidation. <laughs> Probably. That is three successes. You see as they straighten up and without, like, even a word, having basically heard all of the chaos in the castle so far today, they start to lead you down towards the door. I'm going to need you to... It's a bit of a far way. It's not like a super quick way there. And I think you're going to need to kind of blend in. People have seen you all, all, all about the castle, basically fucking around, dicking around today. Um, and I'm going to say, why don't you roll... I don't think I want to be stealthy about this in any way. Oh, really? Okay. How do you want to do this, then? They start leading you there. They just stiffen up and start leading you there. Yes, my prince. I am going to use the forgetful mind, and I'd like to try and change their memories. Holy shit! As we're walking... Okay. I'd like to do it with one and then the other, pretty much. I can do it one at a time. How does it work? So it is, I just roll wits plus subterfuge and the difficulty is equal to the target's willpower points. And the more detailed my description is, the stronger the memories are. Okay, they both have they both have three, three willpower. Why don't you just make me one roll and we'll see how it goes for both of them. Four successes. I can alter or remove an entire scene from the subject's memory. Oh my god. Yeah, this is a scene, man. This is a scene. What do you want them to remember? Or do you want them to just completely forget? I want them to, as I'm walking, kind of just explain to them a conversation that we just had, even though we didn't, where I explain to them how they should follow me and not the queen, and, and that they also think I need to be out there. So... Basically, their their memory after the fact is that they agreed with you. Yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. That's the alteration, is that we had this conversation, and they've agreed to it, and this is on their 
Yeah. Choice. Well, so there, yeah, you're really fucking these guys over. All right. You, you look into both of their eyes and you see as both of their eyes snap back up into their heads and just start like kind of flickering there as they continue to walk with you. It, it's like when they're walking, their memory is like actively being rewritten, right? Like, so they're walking with you, but in their minds, right? You guys are talking, you're saying how much you agree, you know, how much of a fucking bitch the queen is being, like all this stuff. <laughs> and you see as they're both almost like mouthing words, just walking with you. Just give me a... We're just gonna do a flat fucking like luck check to see what kind of obstacle you run in on the way there. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a d10. Low is bad, high is good. 10. Oh my God. Okay. You walk through these halls confidently and you just manage to basically stop and start your stride like as people are turning corners you see your uncle lazarus again floating around a corner accosting just one of the staff you see open door on the way there with your mother in there it looks like she is regaining her composure and is stroking this gray cat on her lap with these yellowed eyes it almost looks like she has stains of red below her eyes but she cries blood bro holy shit you can't even bring yourself to focus on it as you snap your head forward and start walking down towards what you know is the darkened door you've never been this this deep in the castle before and you wind down this staircase with these two guards the torches at the top are orange and as you go further they begin to become green and then blue as this sort of unnatural flame you find does not scare you as most fire would it emboldens you and you walk down into this dark dark part of the castle where you see at the end of the hall this wide gateway almost like a puncture in space with just sort of this black oozing out of the cracks and next to it in this chair is what looks like this old purplish woman that looks up at you quizzically and just says interesting as you stride towards this door with these guards in tow what are you doing you basically walked through the whole castle. You timed your strides just right. You memorized the routines of everyone. Didn't run to a single fucking thing. You're here. What do you do? I open the door. There's like no door. It's literally just like a gateway, like a dark gateway. I'll walk through it. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 I won't. I'll look over to one of the guards next to me. Okay. Walk through this. Make sure it is safe. The guard, uh, eyes still flickering. Yes, my prince. Walks through it, and you see as he walks in and is immediately <laughs> like torn into fucking shreds in like every which direction. Uh, as his like blood and viscera is like stretched basically into the abyss and then it vanishes. The lady goes, Oh, you have to think about where you're going to go. Didn't seem like that one had much on his mind. My mind is clear. Come. And I want to, like, actually, I'll say, does it work if I think and they bring him with me, or is he going to get like that guy? The lady shrugs. <laughs> Just kind of <laughs> smiles. Um, it's good magic. Maybe find out. You can see as she looks up, she's sort of like an old crone, almost. It's not like a better fate awaits you after, so think about L.A. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've only seen it in movies, my prince. Well, I'm about to see the real deal. And I walk through thinking about... Can't, yeah, he looks over at the lady. Can't argue with this guy. I'm thinking about no brakes, car repair stop. This place that keeps coming up. You think about that? The lady says, I never saw you. And basically gives you a tap and you fall forwards into this thing with this poor fucking guard. Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, <laughs> Los Angeles, the city of angels, the city that never sleeps. Wait, fuck, that's New York. Ah! Um, <laughs> um, you basically step into this thing and you see as your vision is enveloped in shadow. And then we will cut over. <laughs> Sweet. That was awesome. Is that good? That was so cool. And as your vision goes dark, Shiloh, we see fading in through the eyes of someone else headed to the City of Angels. How is Arthur getting there? Uh, I hitchhiked. Someone else 
in the shotgun of a truck, essentially under the night sky, the starry night sky that gradually fades into just black as the smog of the city covers it. And uh, the man next to you. Can uh, I be like a hillbilly? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> like a big trucker kind of. Welly, we're here, feller. Thanks for taking Randy's one way trip. That's my name, Crazy Randy. I just look at him, say no words. Yeah. That'll be four forty forty dollars. I keep looking at him. I'm just messing with you. That's a little Randy joke. I do gotta get going though. Hmm. My cat crawls over his back onto his shoulder and onto his lap. Onto Randy's lap? Mm-hmm. From the passenger seat over to me. Well, looky here. An itty bitty kitty. I didn't see this feller. Guess it's my lucky day. I've always wanted a cat. I want her to give him the cutest meow and it just fill him with dread. <laughs> <laughs> I've done so much wrong in my life and I need to change. Let's get going, Void. Tell you what. He gives you $40. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And your incredible cat. I uh, gesture at the cat. So that she jumps onto my shoulders. Yeah, she does. She just leaps on effortlessly. In a way that says, not him. Let's leave him be. Yeah. Well, I take his money, though, because... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you take his 40 bucks. And, I mean, he lets you out basically on the outskirts of the city. All right. Unless you do anything else. So we're not downtown. Where are we? You would probably be on... God, what the fuck? Is the whole Billy doing here? Uh, you would be. <laughs> truck. He's just passing through. He's just or passing probably, through. Maybe he's, he's driving passing the through. Bakers field or something. Or? Yeah, let's let's say that. I, I, I mean, he can he can let you off wherever you you would want to be left off. Basically. In that case, I have a question. Yep. Do I know which parts? I'm actually looking for a place that, if I know already, isn't territory of a clan here. Oh. Perhaps a residential. A residential area, maybe studios. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say Burbank, something. Yeah. So you have you ever been to LA before? No. Go ahead and give me a wits plus streetwise roll. Yikes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've never been here, you're gonna basically have to operate on context clues on where you think these clans are gonna be. It's like difficulty difficulty seven. You don't know the dynamic here yet. Any of my friends give me any hints before I left? I, oh, I don't think they would have given you anywhere to. St- hang on, let me let me see, let me see, let me see. I rolled one eight and one two. Here's what I'll say: because of your allies, you got tipped off here, and you know that at least for a few nights, your boy Magnus has got you, and he's got you an Airbnb. Actually, looking for a residential area with low clan activity, and I'm not looking to sleep. Okay, in that case, you got one one success? Mm. Yeah, you make your way through the streets on sort of the outskirts. What you end up finding is that the areas that are most likely unclaimed are kind of around the parks and the more barren places at night. Sort of those liminal spaces where it's just long grassy fields under under street lamps basically. And I'll say you know, with your role with one success you can find an area like that with some sort of people kind of wandering around that weren't lucky enough to find a place to stay tonight that doesn't seem like it's managed by a particular clan but every neighborhood you, you, you walked through, there was sort of a a telltale raising of hairs on the back of your neck like someone else had marked it. This is That's the best you're able to find with one success, unfortunately. It can never be easy. I'm going to enter a neighborhood of houses, even if it is already marked. Okay. My goal here is to find someone to feed on. I'm going to heighten only one of my senses, my hearing. Once I arrive in this neighborhood, if I can get to one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can get to one. You're just not confident that it's unclaimed. What are you listening for? I'm listening into the houses. 
with slow beating hearts. Not a single one active enough to mean that they're awake. Okay. Preferably someone that lives alone. I am using one of my disciplines to heighten only my hearing. Okay. Give me perception plus alertness plus your auspects, which is to heighten your hearing, right? Sure. I can I can add those dots or you can just subtract the difficulty. It's up to you. Yeah, go ahead and give me all those rolls. You're listening for something pretty crazy here. A lot of heartbeats through the walls. I'm just going to give it a high difficulty. I'm going to say this is probably a difficulty. Honestly, let's give this a nine. This is pretty intense, but you've got a lot of die here. Perception, alertness, and auspects. Is that what you said? Yep. To find basically a, a sleepy house by hearing in this night. Uh, LA traffic is not, not kind to the ears. Now do one cancels ten. Does um, a one cancel a ten? I know ten ooh. is like auto success. And one, <laughs> if you want to just look that up for me. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. It does. <laughs> it cancels out. It cancels out anything. You don't botch the roll if it's even, but like if you have um, a 10 and a 1, it would just be, it would be a fail, yeah. Unless you have a specialization here that would help. No, um, I'll just take the fail and walk into a random house. Okay. All right. Yeah, you, you can't seem to find anything that is what you're looking for so you just cut your losses and follow your cat what is your cat's name by the way void you follow void who just starts purring near this particular sort of nicer nicer home on this pretty pretty decent street someone is hungry Meow. just remember to keep quiet Meow. so we walk in i'm gonna try and be very stealthy how are you getting in uh, well, I guess I'll try the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see if they fucking... All right, all right, all right. I'm going to roll a d10 on a 10. They left the door unlocked. They did, <laughs> they did not leave the door unlocked. <laughs> How are you getting in? Can I, um... <sighs> Meow. What a pain. Can I just... Meow. Can I just force it open? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a twist? <laughs> yeah, roll strength. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, I mean, okay. You know what? Let's just see what happens, guys. Let's just see what happens. Really putting that two intelligence to use. Yeah, you really are. Oh, I rolled a 10. I got a 10. I got a 10. Well, how many successes did you get? That's just one. But it's a 10. That's great, but it doesn't help. <laughs> um, it's just one success. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you do it. You wrench this door open. You basically push it in and you hear it crack and break. You are in. It was fairly loud. And the sound almost echoes down the street and you feel with those keen hearing senses, you hear some things moving in the shadows after that. And they're all around me? Yeah. Not like in the shadows literally, but like something just sort of stirred or took notice. Do I hear anything in the house? No, you're all good. Well, that's all that concerns me. I'll wait. See if anyone in the house... He's awake. <laughs> sure, I'll roll for him. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you see as a man is walking downstairs with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Is someone there? Um, Hello? I, I rolled four dice and they all came up. <laughs> okay, so just... so I, I, he's here now. Is, is, is someone there? I've got a bat. Metal, metal bat. <laughs> Does he see me? I can see him, right? Because the door is wide open. So Does Yeah, he the see door's, door's wide open. He just sees a silhouette of you, basically. Do I need to be invited in? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Fuck! I don't know, do you? I don't. Is that, a, is that one of your flaws? Like, Because that's really fucking funny. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think so. But, but if you want to be, you can try. Imagine imagine breaking down somebody's door and then being like, oh, shit, wait, I need to be invited in. Uh, have any sugar? <laughs> Do you have to be invited in? <laughs> Not in the rules, but I think it's so funny. I mean, if you want, we can give you a fucking flaw right now where you have to be invited into places and I'll give you some extra points to play with. But that is a Wait. that is gonna be a hard bargain, my guy. That's that a hefty so hard, flaw. Dude. Just um, saying, just saying. I mean, hey, I mean so choice is choice is all yours. I uh, allow my cat to walk in first. Okay. And I'm going to 
try to use her as a distraction <laughs> to sort it. <laughs> you're, gonna try to think, you're gonna try and make him think the cat broke in yeah. <laughs> through the door. Okay. Wait, All right. no, no, no. Okay. So as soon as as soon as his eyes move away from yeah from from my silhouette to the cat on the floor, yeah, I'm that'll, gonna try that'll and, happen for sure. And move uh, uh, and move in. Oh, cool, a cat! <laughs> but whoever, whoever's out there, stay back. All right. Um, you're gonna try and move in. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a pain. I know it's all gone so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna walk. Um, fucking hell. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna walk in and look at him directly in the eyes. <laughs> okay, you walk in. Uh, he sees you, and go ahead and describe your character as this man looks at you, horrified, holding a baseball bat. I did not mean to be a fucking himbo. <laughs> you, you are now. <laughs> so I walk in, and even though it's probably still a bit dark. You can see my character is tall, young, at least in appearance, though his skin is very ashy. He has these dark, round sunglasses that he just sort of moves down slightly on the nose to reveal these, like, narrow, cat-like silver eyes. Slicked back black hair. Uh, a very cynical, kind of a jaded and uh, tired expression. Looking like he just stepped out of a uh, modern gothic fashion show with this long black trench coat or tailcoat over a, a monochromatic sort of patchwork dress shirt uh, with a few buttons open at the top. Just some slacks. The shirt and the uh, inside of the trousers have stripes, uh, some black dress shoes. But other than his cat with these very bright eyes, the one thing that sticks out is his hands. It's like as if there's ink underneath the skin that crawls up his veins. One hand hidden by a glove. The other exposed and covered with jewelry. And as I, I meet his gaze, I'm going to just immediately say Oh, please don't. Okay. As you do that, he says Hot Topics close, Spooky! And he's going to try and uh, <laughs> I'm going to need you to roll wits, wits plus dex and just see who comes out here basically first an initiative because I think he's gonna go right for you uh you basically just walked into his house so if you if you if you beat him on initiative you can absolutely do that okay he's not very good at this just a heads up that's fine <laughs> okay anyway. cool all right go for it all right that's a nine a nine a five a seven and a three I rolled two successes and two ones, so it canceled out. I got three successes. Yeah, you you absolutely go first. You see his muscles tense up, uh, almost as if you can see the blood beneath them moving to those fibers as he starts to go to take a crack at your head. I say, stop. Uh, is it like a vampiric power? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I command. <laughs> okay, if you just tell him to stop. <laughs> yeah, what's the what's the thing you're using on him? Just command. So it, it's... it's uh... We just did it earlier. It's gonna be my manipulation plus intimidation against his willpower. Um, you've got. I'll roll it right now. Yeah, he's only got four willpower. More than me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a father. <laughs> That's one, two, three. So two, because it cancels. So three, four successes. Stop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You. you he, he stops in his tracks. And I do it again and say, silence. Okay. Do I need to roll again? E yeah, let's just say yeah. Let's say yeah. Two successes. That's all you need. He freezes. You just hold a finger up. He just stops in his tracks, and he goes to shout, almost like a yelp of protest, and his lips just seal themselves. Where is your dining room? He can't move. He's like fully frozen. He sort of eyeballs you and like eyeballs in the direction of the kitchen nervously, and then eyeballs back at you like he didn't mean to do that. I'm going to have, using another one of my disciplines... I'm going to have his uh, shadow casted behind him sort of creep up and cover his eyes and his mouth and his ears like a little blindfold. Holy fuck. Yeah, he watches in horror as his shadow <laughs> begins begins spinning around him as if there's like a light source rotating above his head uh, and his eyes grow wide as the shadow like twists up him and you see his own shadow puts a finger to its lips before like smothering his like face <laughs> not, not aggressively just just to block all the senses no, yeah i mean i mean like yeah smother it in a way that it, it, it is covered basically by this by this darkness in the kitchen is the water on no right good 
Like, is the tap on right now? Yeah, no, just making sure. No, 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 he didn't, he didn't leave the, the tap on. It's a pretty nice kitchen, too. It's like a very sterile... There's an island. Mm -hmm, no, I have to... I just have to check. It's important. Yeah, I know. I just had to, I had to tell you there was an island. Because I just really want to emphasize what kind of people these are. They, they are island people. They have islands. What's wrong with an island? There's actually two islands. Oh, my God. Okay, that's, that's a little much. Yeah, that's like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have his own shadow... I sort of puppet him, if I may. Yeah! You're pretty much in control of this guy. I'm just gonna walk him down the steps, sit him down at the, um, table. The dining room table. Yep. I mean, he he's looking around very terrified, but he can't do anything. He can't see. It should be covering his eyes. Oh, okay. You see him looking around terrified, but I guess he's just, yeah. Is it, like, completely, is the shadow completely black? Yeah. Devoid of light, pretty much. So yeah, in that case, it's almost like this black bundle. Uh, very occasionally, you can you can see like flickers of his clothes and skin underneath as the as the shadows are sort of enveloping him. But for the most part, he is just this uh, mummy of of shadow. I'll sit him down at the dining room table and pull out a chair for myself. Okay. Since I've dulled teeth, I'll just shut void to open him up, biting either his wrist or his neck. Yep, the cat has has. No trouble as he's sitting here immobilized. The cat just... Meow. And uh, just gives him a chomp on the wrist. And he sees the cat. Uh, starts to drink a little bit. Sort of looks up towards you afterwards. Meow. Uses a paw to wipe its face. That's enough. We don't want another accident. Meow. Pull out from uh, my coat pocket. A small sort of little flask. Mm -hmm. That is uh, ornate. Like looks handmade silver. Has a, a crest on it that matches one clipped to my jacket. Mm -hmm. And also has the initials MB inscribed. I'm going to just sort of uncork it and then hold it beneath the wound. Okay. I'm going for about uh, one blood point here. <laughs> okay. You can safely take the blood that it takes to fill this, this vial. And you would know that you could probably take another vial's worth safely. I just do one. Okay. Then you do it. The blood wells and, and oozes until it's up to the top of the vial. Mm. Until it's almost spilling over and you see a hearty meniscus. Void, close it. Okay. Yep. The cat corks the bottle. Meow. He should be chilling now, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Should he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you're bitten, you kind of calm down. It, it feels nice from what yeah, I Yeah, it does. I don't it know does. if that applies to the cat, though. <laughs> kind of be funny if it did. Oh, you mean is the cat calmed down? No, no, no. no. It, I thought when he... Maybe... I maybe thought maybe he would calm down when he got bitten by Void. Oh. Yeah, I mean, his his body relaxes a bit. It's hard to tell because he's, you know... Right, 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 right. You can't hear him and you can't see him and he's covered by his own shadow slowly That's smothering fine, yeah. I just yeah. leave him. I just leave him covered. Yeah, and I'll start sipping away. How much are you taking after that one vial? I'm sipping from the... Oh, from the vial? Yeah, from the flask. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Yeah. So the safe amount. Yep. You you savor the blood as it goes down. It's not... Even though it's only been in the flask for a second, it is not nearly as, as warm and fresh as it would have felt straight from the wound, but in a way, you feel like that's better. And you savor every sip as you empty this vial and you feel this power coming to you. As I drink it, sitting with him in his dining room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very nice of him. With my cat on my uh, lap, I'll pull out a little book. Okay. And to myself, I'll just read through a list of names on the pages as I drink. And what are those names? Well, it goes on for at least 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> you drink it, read names for 30 minutes. Just casually sipping, kind of hoping he falls asleep. Yeah, he seems to stop struggling after a while. As I read, every name has a date next to it. The first four in 1913. Michael. Danielle. Emily. My no, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and so on up until the present day 
And you're able to read them all and uh, finish your drink. I just try to remember their faces. <sighs> all right. I leave the house and release this one from the shadows. She is clearly. I, I guess you don't see it. You just hear the body. You just hear a body thump against the ground, basically. Mm. Do you close the door or anything of the like? I try. Don't know if it's broken. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a bit broken. I mean, you're able to kind of put it, back, it in, back in place. In place, <laughs> yeah, but it's very clearly like slightly off axis now. I'll just stand in the middle of the street and wait for those shadows to approach me. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're waiting to see who who basically took notice. Mm-hmm. Good shit, man. Put the flask back in my coat. And as you do that you start to hear like a clopping of hooves. LA? And I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> Riding into view. <laughs> my, my character doesn't flinch. On a cantering black horse, accompanied by, it looks like some other, I mean, you'd recognize them as, as vampires. You see this vampire right into sight. He has a thick, thick, sort of upside down frown mustache. This brown leather cowboy hat with this sort of studded rim around it and this medium length brown hair, along with just this big chunky leather coat with this like star badge on it. You see there's other vampires with him that are not not really dressed the part the same at all. You see that they are wearing, I mean, pretty traditional, just regular clothes, t-shirt, pants kind of thing. One of them is more of a Hot Topic vampire with sort of a dark coat, and one of them is trying their best to emulate this guy, uh, and he's sort of just in like a Party City cowboy costume. And this guy rides on up to you. Well, well, well. I push my, I push my sunglasses back up to cover my eyes and Void sits on my shoulder but faces my back, like to wash my back. Not often we get a new vampire out here, especially not one so bold. Mm. Could I have the honor of knowing your name, partner? Stare him down. Wanna know if I'm dealing with a friendly face or otherwise? And you see he flips the coat back and there's like a glint of metal. <laughs> Is a vampire that used a gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a fucking piece, dude. <laughs> Do I, um... <laughs> I'm gonna start circling around you now. <laughs> he, has, he just starts to walk his horse around you. Come on, sunshine. You see this, like, black horse. Um, almost, is very similar to, to Void in a way. You see as they sort of have, like, a little kinship in what they are mm -hmm. as he circles around you. Uh, and these other vampires follow suit. Good evening. I'm new to town and clanless. Well, shit. That explains a lot. Because this ain't clanless turf. <laughs> Clearly. My apologies. But most caitiff would know that. I know how to arrange a meeting. So, whose territory? Ventrue. Proud and true. Just do things a little differently. Serving the crowd in my own little special way. I'm a man of my time. What can I say? But what about you? What kind of man are you? He flicks his coat back. He's <laughs> a glint of metal. So, um... He's basically, I mean, you, you would know the social cues. He's just trying to figure out who you are, what you're, what you're doing here, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. And I mean, you can do if you if you want, you can do a sort of roll to see if the, what his what his motives are here, what he's looking for from you, what what this is. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I assume this was the fastest way to make my presence known to the ones truly in power here, as per the masquerade. Not a bad idea, then. I'd be so grateful to learn from the Ventru. We'll get to that. My name's Deacon Keller. What do I have the pleasure of calling you? Bennett. Arthur Bennett. Bennett, huh? Interesting. Well, Arthur, I hate to say it, but rooming don't come free. Everyone's got to pay rent some way or another. At least here in this city. 
Don't worry. I've got a B and B. No, 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 no. Um, oh shit! Nice. I don't. I don't. Super host or not, Arthur? Does it even matter? <sighs> You'll find it matters a whole lot, whether or not it's a super host. You come to this city. You knock down my door. What brings you? If we know you a little better, we might let you stay. Getting real dizzy from all this circling. <laughs> <laughs> could uh, could I, when I try to read auras, is it possible to read the like strength or age of a particular aura? Do you have to roll for reading you do, auras? You do. <laughs> I'm gonna say if you roll like really really good, like four or five successes, I'll tell you. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let me try then, if I may. Yeah, just uh, tell tell me how the power works. I have to stare at them for at least a few seconds. Okay. And then yeah, roll, you can do and that. then each success indicates how much I, I understand of their aura. Oh, cool. All right. So, who are you gonna read? You're gonna read Deacon. Yeah. Yeah, because he's he's addressing me, and these are his goons, I suppose. Give it, give it a go, man. Give it a go. I didn't get any successes. Wait, one second. I got nothing from him. Yeah, you 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 squint at him, uh, and you see as his the kind of aura starts to. F- fizzle around him, but he, he sort of tips his hat down, and he's a bit harder to read right now. Yeah. I'm, gonna pra- I'm out of practice. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows the strats. Oh, I know the strats. <laughs> so you say, I'm not here on any business. Just looking for somewhere new. New people. Is that true, Arthur? I... I mean, it, it's not... <laughs> false. <laughs> Okay, well, you're, um... You are kind of here looking for something. Yeah. Just figuring out if you need to roll is all. You'll find I'm not one to cause any trouble. I actually don't mind being alone. Well, all right. Though I know how this works, I need to earn your trust. How about this? I'll make things a lot easier for you. We got a lot of different clans in this city. A lot of different folk. <clears throat> a lot of different groups. But they all fall under one umbrella, the Ventru Crown. So, if you do something for us, I'll put you in the good books. You don't have to worry about introducing yourself to anyone. You'll have the Deacon's protection. That means a lot. Elaborate. Well, to put it bluntly, you came at a bad time. Or maybe a good time for you. We're already stretched pretty thin through the city. Lots of struggles going on. Not that you'd know, but, uh, something popped up on the old Keller's radar just a few days ago. It seems like we might have a potential masquerade breaker on our hands. And I figure, if you're looking to prove yourself and stay in the great city of L.A., what better way to do it than bringing this guy to justice? Or girl, or ghoul, or other. (laughs) Hmm. Rather progressive of you. Forgive me, I... Didn't expect such inclusivity from a cowboy. The fuck? (laughs) Listen, I take the good parts of being a cowboy. I try to discard some of the bad. Mm. I'm a man of my time. That doesn't mean I have to bring all the prejudice with me. Episode one, not all cowboys are racist. (laughs) (laughs) Not all cowboys are bigoted. So what about you, Arthur? Are you racist? (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) What a (laughs) what a fucking conversation. Okay. (laughs) What do you say? I just look at him and pretend he did not ask that. (laughs) I hate to break it to you, but if you don't take me up on this deal, I don't know how much longer you'll be able to stay here. Without someone vouching for you, easy to get lost in the night. I've been lost in darker places. And I refuse to be anyone's soldier. Well, you don't have to fight the guy per se. Just figure out what's causing this breach and put a stop to it. I don't care if that's killing. I don't care if that's silencing. I don't care if that's moving someone, some other city, making someone else's problem. Hell, maybe you can even get good in in good with the person other stuff um shit i just met you man i mean there's plenty of other stuff but Fine. I, let's save that where were they last seen well last we heard something about them they were in the part of town controlled by this 
Kind of funky little gang called the Demons. Cringe. <laughs> yeah. You you said it, and I'm a cowboy. <laughs> I marked it on your mini map. <laughs> um, it's right. It's right here. I don't really believe in phones, so here's a full paper map of Los Angeles with a reference point for where you are and where this is. And also a compass. <laughs> and also a compass. <laughs> to find all relevant landmarks. And after I find this person, how will I find the Ventru? Sir, I know. <laughs> well, I got full faith after this tonight. We'll be able to find you when you need us. How, what check do I make to know what that means? What fucking what? What did they what? What did they do? That that was just basically saying you broke down this door, so we found you. Like I'm sure we could find you again. Is basically what it means. You don't need to do a check for that. Oh, okay. okay. So that's a yes. What do I do with them when I find them? That's your problem, Arthur. Just stop the breach, and we'll talk. And I hope we do get to talk again. Sunshine! Away! <laughs> Poor sound. <laughs> what? Um, he hits the back of this horse with his spurs and starts uh, trotting off into the mist of the night where it almost appears like he vanishes. And these fellow clan members look at you. Yeah, we'll be going too. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they run off sort of scatter, and you're left to your own devices. What a pain. Now there is a tower nearby, and you can use it to fill out your map a little more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I climb the tower. That's not real. Okay, all right, all right. Make me, yeah, make me, make me dex plus athletics. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There are, there are members of your clan that have been captured nearby. If you release them, you get XP. You have to free them. There's actually, there's actually 18 separate locations where they've been captured at identical outposts. I was going to say... He didn't. He didn't say what section of the city. He just said there is a city section, right? He said he told you where it was, and he he literally gave you like a fucking map and compass. Bro is old fashioned. He's old fashioned. He didn't say what they did to break the masquerade. Is no, just... he didn't. He okay. didn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe right. you could have found um, out, but he's gone. Now. Uh, all right. Is it is it within walking distance? Do I need to pay for public transit? Am I gonna hitchhike again? Uh, it's across the city. How do you get there? <laughs> <laughs> we're in we're in Los Angeles, right? Yep, we're in Los Angeles. I guess I hitchhike again. Or no, I call a taxi. I know how to do that, right? I'm not that. Yeah, you can hail a taxi. You got 40 bucks. Oh, I do got 40 bucks. You got 40 bucks. I'm going to say pretty easily um, you're able to hail a taxi and get to the other side of the city where it is said that this sort of breach happened. <sighs> Does the taxi driver try to make any small talk? I'll kill him if he does. Just don't answer. <laughs> Already thinking of my next bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, hey, what are the chances I do Ubers too? Good to see you again. Classical music, cold air, and no conversation. <laughs> well, all right. Swerves in and out of all the cars because they're in two minutes. Uh, <laughs> puts you out. That'll be forty bucks. On the dot, really. Yep. All right, I give him forty dollars. I. <laughs> <laughs> My life is a vicious cycle. He drives off in the taxi. You get put out here, um, in this uh, pretty pretty ramshackle part of town. LA is cheap. Back in New York, the cabs are like sixty to eighty dollars. Yeah, you get a good deal. Yeah, it's not it's not a super great looking place. You see some flickering neon signs that are that are still on. Maybe shops the owners just forgot to turn off. Most things are closed with iron grates or shutters over them. Uh, You see some flickering lights of of multiple stores. You see a haircut place, cafe, some food places. And one that catches your eye because it's a bit bigger is no brakes. This car mechanic shop. I will slowly walk forward. Yep. To no brakes. Okay. And is there anyone inside? As you look inside, no brakes. You peer in, and at first there's nothing. And then there's, like, a flash of, like, shadow that, like, licks at the corners inside this building. And then another. And then all of a sudden, this fucking, like, doorway 
shoots up out of the ground and out of it steps this incredibly regal looking sort of dressed in these emerald clothes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> vampire uh, 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 that you've never seen before as well as like someone that looks like they're in this sort of slight armor, sort of more regal, almost Templar-ish clothes with sort of this dark hair looking around very, very confused. I, I honestly thought he was going to end up in New York. I mean. Yeah, no, that's what you see as Shiloh steps out uh, of the portal in uh, no breaks in front of you. Can I have a fucking willpower point? Like, everywhere I snap, there's chaos. The guy had a bat. No, I was fucking... I got pulled over by the cowboy. I'll, I'll give you a willpower point for a cowboy showing up when you fucking tried to feed on someone. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, Shiloh, you're now there in no breaks. You pop in and you see through the window of this place that there's just this creepy, like, pasty, young, <laughs> scary shadow vampire man watching you. He looks fucking, like, just scowl on his face. As Shiloh walked out of this doorway, you can see, like, the uh, like just the red glow in his eyes at first. It fades a little bit. And he looks down at his arms and legs. Oh dear, I, I'm going to need a rag of, or something. I'm covered in. Uh, could, could you find me one? There's oh, got to be. Yes, my prince. Uh, he 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 like walks over. Uh, he like he throws you like a car. Ra- oh, I'm sorry. That was dirty, my prince. Oil, oil, my prince. Oh, Please, oil, oil, your complexion, my, your my complexion, gloves. my prince. My, I lost my other glove. This is the worst day of my life. Who is that? I'm like I'm not looking away from the window. Now that I've looked up to it, I just go in and like I'm smacking the guard's face. Who is that? Who is, oh, that must be one of the, lo- nope, that's definitely a vampire, my prince. <laughs> I can't say I've seen them before. <laughs> that is a vampire. Yes, my prince. Are there only vampires? I don't know, my prince. I've never been to LA, my prince. Well, here we are. Uh, what is your name? I, I don't really want to keep calling you guard. That feels rude. My name, prince, is Grefgor. I'm not going to call you that. While they are distracted, I'm, I'm different. Can I just call you Gref? Gref? Uh, it's it's a Gref, little shorter. Gref, Gref, is, Gref is good, my prince, if you wish to be on these terms. All right, Gref, we need to talk to... <laughs> Can I call you Shy? Can I call you Shy, my prince? Prince Shiloh. I am sorry. If you wish to behead me now, would be the moment. No, no one is beheading. <laughs> Where did he go? Bows. Where did who go, my prince? I bust out the door, and I'm looking <laughs> for him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you kick out the door. Where are you going, Arthur? I just kind of ducked around the corner into the darkest place of the, like the corn. I don't know the corner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, uh, I'm just I'm just stealthing. So I was gonna listen to them speak. Okay. Are you are you trying to hide from them deliberately when they come out here or no? Yeah, but I'm standing in the shadows and kind of like you know it's my thing. All right. If you're gonna try and hide, you you do have to roll. Can I be at least obscured by the shadows? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you would be. Add something to it. Yep. Go for it. Go ahead and roll. Shiloh, if you wish to figure out where this guy is, if you're looking for him, go ahead and give me a perception plus, I'm going to say awareness, because it's supernatural. Okay. Grefgor is going to try his best, too. With perception, I have the little expertise thing. Is it called an expertise? For, it's called one of us, so I can, like see vampires i guess like it's easy to call out a vampire yeah so if you roll it if you roll a 10 you can count it as two successes instead of one two tens oh my god holy shit are you fucking um, serious we're gonna go ahead and add grefgore's successes to you grefgore got two successes so that's a total of seven seven on that side all right all right they clearly see me it's still like creepy though like i still want to walk slowly hello i just slowly walk out of the shadow like a fucking vampire does <laughs> Like, slowly revealed as if, like, uncovered by a shadow. Oh, shit, my prince. I'm kind of, like, just peering around the corner. Go and talk to him. Me? You mean me? Introduce yourself. Um, I've never... I have... I believe in you. You're my special boy. And I knew Prince Shiloh. He walks up. Uh, hello. Uh, I am a special boy, and I, and I serve, um, Prince... I'm not here for you. I'm sorry. Unless you're the one causing trouble. Wait, no, I'm not. I protect Prince Shiloh. My name is Grefgor, and if you wish to har- harm him, you must go through me. Please don't harm him. Is it you two that are breaking the masquerade? No. Are we? I would I would never dream of it, Prince Shiloh. I guess we are kind of out in the open right now, if that counts. But otherwise, no. Then I have no more business with you. And I just I just walk away. I'm going to keep looking for that. For that game. For the game. <laughs> As you as he walks away, I want to like follow him, like but like from a safe distance. Yeah, 
The, uh, your guard. All right, my prince. I guess we... Okay, there you go. Be oh, quiet. god damn it. All right, fine. I'm going to follow him. Yes, my prince. Anything for you? Keep an eye out for if anyone is watching him and keeping tabs. Yes, my prince. Can I ask... Emazol? Yeah, hey. Since you turned, it's been... I'm gonna roll a d10 to see how many days. It's been three days since you turned. Uh huh. What have you managed to do in three days? I imagine in three days, or I guess more so night. I don't know. How bad does the daylight affect you when you're like freshly turned? Is it instant? So the first like day, it it just kind of seared really bad, and by the second day, it was already like too much. Well, he definitely would have spent his nights out and about doing his thing, and by doing his thing, I mean he probably would have enacted vengeance upon the fangs like really hard like and not subtly either hence why people would probably you know be a little concerned about some masquerade breaking going on in this area yeah so you basically obliterated i'm gonna roll you have three nights do you how many nights did you just spend a, a fucking destroying i'd them? say probably the first night i was probably just trying to like sort myself out so i'm gonna say two nights all right. Totally fair that they come, like, they, they catch on after one night, so, like, the, I think... <laughs> You've basically, like, destroyed or torn apart, otherwise, however you want, like, 12 fangs by now. And I've, I've absolutely been looking for the guy who who turned me, or I turned myself with, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> it was weird, yeah. <laughs> Situation's just strange. I have a question for you, because this is something you mentioned before the session. Yeah. Where does Soda land in all this? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know if it would have... In three days, I don't know if anything would have happened there. So you've basically been out on on the hunt trying to exact revenge. I probably would have hung out with them a little bit, but I would have I would have quenched my thirst for blood a little bit with, with the fangs. You know, that's... Yeah, you're you're very much learning on the ropes here. You're basically... Yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty much killing and enjoying it. Soda probably knows. That's what I'll say. I, I trust him enough that he'd probably know that some shit's going on. I'm like super awesome now. But I don't think he'd be like a ghoul or anything, if that's, yeah. And can I ask what you'd be doing on this night, then? On this night? This fourth this fourth night, yeah. It's really funny, because I really wanted to be doing something casual, like just working on a car in the shop. <laughs> but I think that's already uh, gone past a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I just figured it would make more sense to introduce one at a time, but... You know what? Uh, probably still in the prowl. Looking, mostly, like, hunting for this guy. So I'd be like... Uh, running across rooftops and shit because that's where I like the first time I saw him he was on the rooftops and that's how he kind of got around so I'm looking absolutely Emzil you're running through these rooftops the wind in your hair kind of circling around this territory that you know so well and something catches your eye as you see a silhouette very similar to that first one that jumped you followed by two other very ghoulish looking people moving down the street actually close to the car shop what do you do? So that's how it is, huh? <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna jump down. <laughs> I'm gonna jump down and try to fucking uh, kick the one who you said looked like for like the the silhouette that I saw the first time. I'm gonna just like try to. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fucking Christ! I cannot be surprised. Holy shit! Okay, in that case, both of you guys, I guess everyone roll uh, Dex plus Wits. Tell me what you get. How many how many successes? I got one success. Five, including one ten. You go, you go before me, and then I got four. Top of the round is Arthur. Arthur, you are looking uh, for this person who broke the masquerade, just kind of idly walking and watching Void. When you hear a scream and look up to see a boy plummeting directly <laughs> towards you, I've got you now, motherfucker. I do not even flinch or hesitate. Oh, he's one of my disciplines. Okay. So I'm gonna spend a blood point here. So. What happens is uh, you come charging at me, and right from behind me, from my own shadow, a black inky tendril shoots out about six feet long from my shadow. Attempts to, I, I guess, basically stop you and then and like grab and, like, and they restrain you. Oh, is there anything I would roll against this? She, yeah, I don't know. It didn't tell me that, but I can try. All right, let's it. see. How does this? What what power are you using against him right now? All right, so this is this is called um, Arms of the Abyss. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ! And you know, just for flavor, because I like painting myself into corners, the measles absolutely probably in a frenzy the second he saw a silhouette. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, great! I'm not even gonna roll for it. He saw he saw a silhouette that looked like the guy, and that's it. That's all it took. So, yeah, it's gonna it, it can constrict, which is uh, it's in, inflicts 
damage per turn, but I don't know how I don't know how to construct. Yeah, you've got the so the up to the whatever you have in up ten abrasion is how much strength and dex it has. So go ahead and roll me a. Um, you're trying to grab him with it, right? Yeah. All right. So what do, what do I roll? Go ahead and roll. Uh, I'm gonna say plus your brawl. Roll your up ten abrasion, which is your shadow power. Okay, five successes. Holy shit! All right, five successes on that. Okay, how does fucking dodging work? That's roll. a good question. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So if you want, you can basically abandon your turn and roll dex plus athletics, um, and try and get five successes or more to cancel it out. Oh, that's gonna be rough. If I get a ten, I can maybe feasibly do it. Yeah, but you don't have to do that. You can just get hit by this thing. Yeah, I'll thing. just get hit. I think. Yeah, you see these this, this shadowy tendril flying straight towards you, uh, and it just like wraps around you you see even like constricting your shadow binding it to you as you're basically held here like six feet off the ground by this person bastard got some new moves huh i slowly lower my sunglasses and look at them does this looks like a can i read if this actually can i just read his aura does it go is for it, a, it yeah you guys look like kids like teenagers like what do you what am i looking young at young at all like 18 young at all? yeah oh, okay i'm just trying to see if i can determine if he looks like a young like a new vampire. I wish there was an easy way to determine that. Yeah, I feel like there's enough like signs. I'm gonna say it's pretty easy to tell this is a new vampire. Just based on the sort of coloration and it looks like his sort of human features are still vaguely there, like have not yet disappeared or fully changed. And you're, you're experienced enough to recognize someone that's fresh versus someone that's fucking ancient. You're held six feet off the ground. Uh, Emazul, it's your turn. Am I like held around like the, the sort of like waist stomach area like tying my arms together sort of deal it'd, it'd probably be like your arms are now pinned to your sides kind of thing you're just held up you're held up by a tin yeah okay right? well anyway uh i'm gonna like loosen my shoe with my other foot and uh, try to flick it at you really hard <laughs> 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 oh my god okay um go ahead and just roll me just go ahead and roll me dex plus brawl Dex was probably okay. Add, add a difficulty to this. So difficulty seven instead of six. So uh, three. Yep, you absolutely kick the shoe off, slaps him right in the <laughs> face. Go ahead. And, what's your strength plus one? Uh, it's four. Arthur, go ahead and and give me a soak roll for four damage coming right at you. I got six successes. You're completely fine. The shoe just like leaves a shoe print on your face and then just pff, falls off. <sighs> what a pain. I don't know who you are, kid, but I'm hundreds of years older than you, so unless you want your new one life to end as quickly as it started, I suggest you calm down. I flick the other sh- <laughs> <laughs> you, you only have one action per turn. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, all right. First, first, Grafcore and Shiloh get to go. Would you like to do anything, Shiloh? So, as I watch... Amazel jump down and oh, they were just down, fighting. I look over at Griff. I go, Griff, we have to go. Everyone in LA is big and trying to kill each other. We have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I run. My, my, my prince, it's chaos in the streets. It's chaos in the streets. Chaos my everywhere. Prince. We've been here it's for just five like the minutes. Movies. It's just like the movies, my prince. Exactly like them. Let's go. And I start fucking sprinting. <laughs> okay, he starts sprinting away with you. I, I go back. To, I go back to the no brakes car repair, and okay, we right. fucking hide. <laughs> yeah, you run back over. You see that the shadow gateway, whatever was there, is not there anymore. No, bring it back, please, please. I Make cannot, I cannot, my door. prince. I cannot, my prince. This is not within my power, Shit. my prince. Not within my power. Don't tell my um, mother, I swear. Uh, <laughs> come back, prince. I, prince, I think you know. Alakazam. Oh, that's a good idea. No, hang on, hang on. Abracadabra. Then you say Alakazam, my prince. Alakazam. He did nothing. We just look stupid. You look back, he's like hiding behind a desk. <laughs> We're going to die. Are you actually like trying to hide, hide, yes. or are you just trying to... Okay, all right, give me dex plus stealth. Uh, nothing above a six, and one, one. Oh, fucking Christ, this just got really messy. All right, you run into the shop, you start looking for some place to hide, and like bump into a table, and the shock you send through the table knocks a bunch of wrenches down, like over off this fucking bench, and you hear from upstairs, a measle? What are you doing up so late? I look over at Graf, <laughs> and then I go, Pretend I am dead, then I lay down. My prince, would you like me to dispose of the voice? No. Just wait. Pretend we are dead. <laughs> Good idea, my prince. 
Lay down. <laughs> lay down. <laughs> okay. I'm already right. covered in blood. I guess he's fine. No, that would never kill a vampire, my prince. You see, he he like runs over to like some some sort of wooden workbench and like rips it off, so it looks almost like a stake. Here, my prince, hold this to your chest. Oh, screw it. I hold it to my chest. Uh, he grabs one too, and you guys just fall like I I lay on the ground and I hold it to my chest, and I'm like, how do dead people look? I don't know how dead people. I I have not seen like many. us, my prince, like us. And uh, and he holds it he holds it to his chest and just makes like a blah face. I put my tongue out. Uh, eh. <laughs> he does he does the same. Well, this is getting horribly messy. Um, up next is Arthur. Do I know how to break someone out of a frenzy? In my experience. In your experience, someone can will themselves out of a frenzy, or if the situation is calm, or if enough time passes, basically. I mean, the, the, the best option here, if you were dealing with this situation and someone was frenzying, would be to basically like stuff them in a locker and make them wait, right? <laughs> like until it wears off. Did I dominate him out of one? <laughs> it sounds so silly. Did uh... I use my discipline dominate to get him out of it? Maybe if you if you roll real good, maybe yeah. All right, maybe what I say will trigger his willpower, but I also use mesmerize just in case it doesn't. It depends on how you approach this situation, but there's a chance I will myself out of this frenzy. So while I still have him grappled, <clears throat> with my uh, extremely heightened hearing, I heard the mortal speak. Correct. You're in sort of the frenzy of battle here, and it's sort of down the street. But I, ha yeah, but this is like a heightened sense for discipline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, fuck it, sure, you did. So I look directly into her eyes, and I use mesmerize in the beginning, but keep going. Lesson one on vampire society. If a human sees us, they must lose their memory or lose their life. There's a man in that store nearby, and he's approaching. If he sees you being a foolish, uncontrolled beast, you will have to kill him. And if you care about him, I'll kill him. Understand? Okay. Is it my turn after you say that? Uh, oh, uh, every, every turn you take lethal damage. Strength plus one. Okay. Holy shit. Okay. Are you going to basically squeeze him with the shadow tendril? I, yeah, I'll do it at like in half power. If I can. I don't think you can do that, man. Okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm strong. You either squeeze him or you don't. I get, can he choose to just not damage me? Yeah. Sh surely. Surely he can. Yeah. He can. All right. I will not. I will not squeeze you. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, you can, like, squeeze him to show that you could, but you can't, like, squeeze him at half power. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, but I, like, I can't intimidate and use Mesmerize, so. Or maybe I don't use Mesmerize. I'll just intimidate him. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you need to do right now... And this like is what what kind of informs my next decision is can I see your face? Yeah, I lowered my glasses a little bit to lock eyes with you. Okay, yeah, that informs my next decision then. We're good. Yeah, I mean, if you want to try and intimidate him, I'm just gonna say that's right. I don't have to. Worry. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're sort of in PvP right now. I'm just I'm just gonna say like if if you want to be intimidated by that, you are. If you don't, you you're not. I wouldn't be because of my frenzy. No, that's what I'll say. Okay. But uh, this will resolve in a different way. In that case, Emazel, you're up next. Yeah, so uh, I, I flick my other shoe off. <laughs> uh, and then I kind of actually get a look at, at who it is I'm fighting right now. And I will use that willpower to, to lower myself out of the frenzy. I'm going to say you don't even need to spend a willpower. You, you see that the source of your frenzy, this is just not who you thought it was. And after struggling in this shadowy tendril for a few more seconds and meeting his gaze you realize that your rage is, is misplaced here, and it kind of fades. Huh? What the fuck? You're not the guy that bit me? Wait, you, you had to kill the guy in there? Do you know him? Yeah, that's my father. Then you go deal with him. I drop him. Make sure he doesn't see you. And I point at the others who really hit him. No, I don't think they No, are. we're in the middle of the floor They're in not, the shop. So you can't see <laughs> oh. where they are right now, but for us... They are currently playing dead, pretending to be <laughs> staked in the middle of a car mechanic shop. Oh my god. <laughs> Not even like regular dead, like we're vampires and we got staked dead. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't see the other vampires. <sighs> All right. I like put my hands in my pocket and kind of like, I just like saunter over very casually. Quickly. Okay, here's, here's the problem is that I had Jeffrey roll initiative, and he rolled right below you. So, 
what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a little roll for him to see if he comes down the stairs or not. Okay. I mean, <laughs> his funeral, I guess. Um, so let's do this. Uh, Shiloh, you start to see feet and legs moving down the stairs of this mechanic shop. I play dead still. Oh, my God. Yeah, and he starts to say, What are you doing down here, Amazole? You knocking shit over again? I'm guessing I'm not close enough to do anything. You would hear him, like, from outside, but that's it. But what does everyone do at this point? We're going to be out of initiative. Oh, I can do something? He's basically about to stumble in on this, yeah. I'm, I'm probably, like, grumbling under my uh, under my breath, like, why, they, why the fuck do they go in there? Yeah, so I'll probably jog a little bit more quickly, and, uh... I don't do fucking nothing. Okay, weird. And outside, there's probably, like, a... What is it called? Oh, what would you store oil in? Barrel? Like, I guess a barrel, or, like... But would they be in, like, a, a canister in for a mechanic shop? Would they have barrels? Oil, it would just... It, well, no, you could... I mean, you could just get a thing of oil in, like, a plastic container. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, that works. No, uh, surely, surely there's just one sitting outside, empty or not. Doesn't matter. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, totally. And I pick it up. Pull up with the 10W30. And I open the door. I'm um, like, just bringing in the oil, Jeffrey. Got it, just like you asked. He walks down the stairs. About time. Your day's late. <laughs> and then he looks over <laughs> and sees two fucking vampires lying on the ground, holding sticks to their chest, and says, Amazon, what the <laughs> fuck? And that's where we'll end the session for tonight. <laughs> God, okay. Jesus Christ, yeah, dad's as your dad dead. <laughs> stumbles in on this thing. Um, that is where we will end session zero. <laughs> how, did everyone, uh, how did everyone enjoy it? Great. It was very good. I had fun. Yes, my wow. prince. Very good, my prince. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was fucking awesome. I love how like the most stoic character had the most nonsensical bullshit happening the entire time. Dude, I felt so bad because he was like, he messaged me this whole routine beforehand too, and then like walks in and immediately breaks the door off his hinges <laughs> and just like smothers a guy. <laughs> oh fuck, that was awesome. A label different. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this uh, uh, session zero. I'm I'm very excited because the next episode you hear will all be in person, picking up the adventures of uh, Shiloh, um, Arthur, and Emazel. So we will see you then. Uh, but in the meantime, catch us over on Just Rolled with it, where we'll talk about what just happened, guys. Ooh. What did just happen? What was that? There's freaking vampires in my freaking car shop. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, uh, stake you later.